This is Real Life Conversation with the voice of the North. This is Night Owls with Alan Robson. Call 0191 488 3188. Greatest Hits Radio. There you go. Getting a lot of people saying, great to have you back. They're just finding the show. Uh, nice to have you back. I love it. And a girl agreed to go out with me because I gave her a bottle of lemonade, said Mark. You could say I swept her off her feet. Oh, dear, dear. Uh, <laughs> It's going to be a long night, isn't it? I, said, I got a new job as a street cleaner. It turns out there's not much training involved. You just pick stuff up as you go along. Mark, you're a gem. Thank you very much for all of that. Remember, we're also looking for songs with fruit and veg in the title. And um, I just heard the jingle there, so you know, the, the voice of the north. Most of the calls, most of the texts we seem to be getting are from all over the place. We've already had Swindon and uh, and Sheffield. We've got some more, like, Peas, Peas, Me, The Beatles. That's classic. Uh, God Save the Bean, The Sex Pistols. I'd like to peach the world to sing. Oh, dear, dear. Fennel of Love. Oh, Dire Straits. Very good. A little bit of David Bowie singing Aubergine Genie. Can you get some fruit and veg? Either in the bands or the artists or in the song itself. And we've still had one or two people sending in real songs with uh, fruit and veg in the title, Don't Sit Under the Apple Tree. I know that's a real song, so that's what we don't want. Okay, we're very kind that you've taken part, but no. Anyway, and a lot of other things as well. Harvey says, just heard you mention simple pleasures. Mine is listening to Motorhead. Yours, Harvey. And why not, Harvey? There you go. Bit of overkill, bit of bomber. Why we are the road crew, do, 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 do. Why not? Uh, it's all good for you. Now, do you know we got that TV programme where a posh family... They really annoy me, these TV programmes. They really do. You get a posh family that says, I want to build a house and I want it to look like a space-age windmill. What? Great des- Grand Designs. Grand Designs, I think it's called. And there's a posh man who, who is at the programme who goes and goes... And, and what's your budget for this? Ah, oh, it's a re- really tight budget. We've only got six point four million pounds to throw at this project. Give it to the third world. Give it to us, for heaven's sake. However, they, they, they're going to build a house, and it, it takes you through like a month of shows, twenty thirty shows across a year. And when you see them build a house, you don't care for the people because they're rich. You don't care for the house because it's being built by rich people. Uh, However, we've got a real proper how it really happens kind of story. We got Margaret on the lane, who's in Lorraine, and she is in France as we speak. So let's make sure we get her on. Bonsoir, Margaret. Ah, bonsoir, Alan. (laughs) Hey, now this is it's fantastic (laughs) because the other week you sent a letter in. We've been trying to get in touch with you since. That's right. And yeah. it, you were saying, and the thing that I loved about it is, it was absolutely real. This is you don't have a budget of six point three million pounds. No, no. You're no, also no, no, no. not building uh, a windmill in the shape yeah. of a space station or anything <laughs> like that. You've no. what you've done is in France, it's it's cheap, slightly cheaper to buy houses, yeah. so you can get good value, f- good value for money in France. And uh, you've bought what you described, and I love the description. I fell in love with your description. We bought our forever home. Yes, which, that's right. Which is essentially, from what I gather, in bit at the moment, and you're yes. living in a caravan, and your description of the caravan yes. was, it seems to be shrinking. And I could imagine the more you're in there, the more stuff you're gathering, you're grafting as hard as you can. Yes. I mean, what gave you the idea to, to go and do this? Because truthfully, when you watch the TV programmes, they tend to push people more likely to the Spanish coast or, or Greece or those, those kind of, even Florida. Why did you pick France? Well, in the beginning, Alan, we lived in, in the Canaries for 10 years, you wow. see. right. And then um, in a tourist place, because we run a bar there for 10 years. Right. And it was just so hectic. And we've been to France quite a few times. Mm-hmm. And the place where we are, Lorigne, uh-huh. Uh, Western France is it's 
very quiet, right. a, a tiny little village. And we just says one day, I wonder if there's, we had a look on the estate agents to see if there's any land available. Like you say, it's, it's very cheap here, mm. land to buy. Sure. And then, um, yeah, we, we came across this land and um, it had a well on. Well, I've always wanted a well. <laughs> 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 and since I was little, like a little wishing well. Yeah, but who, 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 wouldn't, who wouldn't want a well? Yeah, it's just a little... I wouldn't and, want one. No, um, get it. It's, anyway, we, we, we put an offer for it. It's, like you say, it's just nothing really. Mm. And then it was accepted, and then we started to build, but nothing like a budget, like they've got six point, you know, yeah, yeah. nothing. But I mean, we are, we are doing it ourselves. So presumably, did you have a little bit of money from the bar or not? We did have a little bit of money from the bar, Alan, yes. We, we did have to have some sort of collateral to start, yes. So did, does that mean hiring hey, hey, a team of French builders or are you doing it all no, by yourself? No, no, we've done it all by ourselves. Oh, my good gracious. So how's, um, how's it good? Because I'm presuming you're building a stone house. Are you a house with, with bricks it's, and stuff? It, yes, it's, it's block. It's right. uh, like breeze blocks and... Um, because you can't get bricks out here, or you've got to import them from, you know, wherever. England or yeah. whatever. Which is more money, uh, so yeah, you, you go the got, cheapest route. Yeah, right. we've got breeze blocks, and what we did was we had to have the house that we had in Spain, two-bedroom bungalow. Mm -hmm. We designed the house on that. So what we had to right. do, we, we put the plans into the Marie, the uh, uh -huh. Marie, town which hall. is the town hall here. Yeah. And... Uh, after six weeks, it was passed. Wow. And then um, this is right, you can go ahead. So now we, we're building a two bedroom bungalow. That's it. Not a chateau, no nothing. A two bedroom no, bungalow. No, but it's your forever home. It is our forever ah, home. I'm and not. Gary, my partner, who I'm with, he's been a builder for over 30 years. Oh, play with. Thank heavens for that. Because I was just so thinking, if the, if, yes. because thinking 10 years in the bar, I'm thinking, Probably the biggest thing that you've picked up is a, a you know like a paint pot, and if I, if her bloke <laughs> has just been a waiter for ten years, or, or, you know I'm just changing the pumps. Okay, he's, he's, he's built like a brick yeah. toilet maybe, but breeze can, blocks. This is yeah, one he, one bloke breeze blocks. You can tweak the plumbing a little bit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but, but now he's um, I, I mean he's built homes in uh, Germany and right. in. Um, but never on his own, surely to goodness. Not on his own. No, with, with people, with other guys. Well, they're like you know a I mean? building crew. Okay. Yeah, because he's, he's had his own business for a few years, he's in construction. Right. So. I mean, you've got the yeah, right I'm, guy I'm with the, you. I'm the labourer. I'm the labourer, you see. But does this not mean, because the one thing about working with your partner usually means yeah. you're shouting at each yeah. other all the time, no. and uh, whenever anything goes wrong, and stuff does, especially when, yeah, you know, because yeah. you, you're up against it. You're building a house on oh. your own in the middle of a foreign country where the best yeah. you can do is say, uh, uh, pardon, do you speak but, uh, either uh, English or what? Spanish, <laughs> but not French, I'm yeah. guessing. I mean, this is it's a major leap. It is a major leap. It is, it is massive. But we did 10 years in a bar. Right. Well, seven years in a bar, sorry. We lived 10, ten years. Mm. So we worked 24 hours. We lived, breathed together. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And here, this is, yeah, we're living in the caravan and it's pretty small. Right. And uh, so, no, we're used to each other. We, we're used to our ways. Don't get me wrong, we do have moments I'm where the air that. might be a little bit blue, <laughs> but. We, you know, I just say, pardon my French, please. Yeah, no, absolutely. Me, but, but no, honestly, yeah. Alan, it's 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 been our dream, and um, we're in our mid fifties, right. and you know. Yeah, so you're heading to you're heading towards a new life. Once yeah. you're, in, what are you going to do? What? Okay, let's say uh, fast forward to, and I don't know. Have you got a time scale on how long this is going to take? Or? We started on the 1st of April, yeah. April Fool's Day. Our first block <laughs> went on. Sounds right. In. Yes, and um, <laughs> we are now busy with the roof. Wow, that's great. Yes, that's six months, basically. So, in, so in, hopefully to, to get you all we should all be finished for, um, oh, I don't 
the March, April, January, January, January would be great. Yeah. Wow. Now you yeah. you say January and hopefully because that's when the worst of the weather yes will be across our part of the world and France. Yeah. Um, it sounds like a dream come true. Once you get it done, then what? Yeah. I mean, are you going to be opening a bar in for a little? I don't know, no. a bar in France, or is no, is that it? No you, more bars. Or yeah, is he going to work as bar. a work as a builder over there? Yes, we're just going to work sort of three, four days a week, obviously for income, right? To help um, pay for bills, sure. You know, and just everyday living, but. Not on a magnitude where you have to have everything in the UK. Mm. It's just a, a slower pace of life, Alan. Here, yeah, like it was in the Canaries. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. It's not. Um, so you've been there a while, have you? Okay, uh, you got a bad belly. You need to go to the doctors. How are you covered? I mean, does your NHS cover you? It no, can't cover you no, over there. We're not, no, we're not covered by National Health now. We we have to have. Um, We've entered into the health system, right. which is um, you uh, you go sort of self-employed, right? And then uh, you enter in the health system. You pay you pay towards the health system, right? And uh, you pay like a top-up insurance for All your right. health care, right? So, so, no, so the pro- problem like is you'll get everything the same as the NHS if you went to. Uh, a doctor's or a hospital, oh, but, but you're actually yeah. paying at the top end for it. We, we, you have to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I went to see a doctor actually uh, about four weeks ago, right. and we we weren't covered then, and I had to pay twenty five euro. That was all, just to see a doctor. Right. And it was he was amazing straight away, and um, I paid eight euro for um, a prescription. Hey, that's not bad that, anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah. worst case scenario. But presumably, once you get yourself like an insurance policy, yes. then you're covered for either is the length of the policy, a year or two years, uh, whatever you sign you, up for, I suppose. Yeah, you get, um, once our secret number comes through for like for work, hmm. we are now in the system and you pay like a top up. It might be about 40 euro a month. Right. 50 euro a month. Right. That's, you know, each. So yeah. it's like 80 euro a month. That's what we'll pay for insurance. Right. So we can we have our medical card and we'll go into um, the, uh, go see the doctor and mm. if we pay up front, we get everything reimbursed. Because a friend of mine did something like that and for the first year, um, they were travelling back and forth because they, they didn't live there like like you are. You're, you, you've given 110% yeah. of it. Uh, they were coming back and then coming back to check the French builders and then leaving and back and forth. And they were using one of those international things you can get for holidays where you're covered anywhere in Europe for 12 months. Right. You know, that yeah. you buy you buy in Britain. And uh, that seemed to work. But once you settle down, you've got to integrate with their system, obviously. Well, you have to. Once, once you've been in a, a, con- a different country for three months, hmm. that's it. You, you declare, you know, you, you go through their system. Otherwise, well, to me, you, you'd be forwarding, the, the, you know, the, right. what you see, England type of thing. Sure. Because we we were officially a residents of uh, the Canaries, mm. you know, before we moved here to sure. France. Yeah. So we've been out of uh, the English system for, what, 10, 10 right. 11 years right. now. Yeah, right. You know? Right. right. So if we ever go back to England, what we do... We when we when we travel back, we have to get travel insurance to cover you in your home country. To cover us in England, yeah. Yeah. Strange. yeah. Strange. So if we ever visit a doctor or the hospital in England, <laughs> be sure like our residency card plus our health insurance, what oh, we yeah. our travel insurance, you know. Brilliant. Hey, well, I know yeah. you, we we were chatting. You were chatting to Nick off here, and, and we're yes, gonna um, we're gonna yeah. keep a regular check on you if that's all right. If we can give you a ring every now yes. and then, and uh, I'm gonna send you some. Some pictures. Oh, they built from zero to where we are at now. Fantastic. Yeah. And keep a little spot next to you where where, you can, where my bungalow can be. Oh, I love <laughs> this. I'm telling you now, there's a plot of land right next door. Oof. And we don't want nobody to buy it apart from you. Hey, well, there you go. Yeah. Champion. Hey, yeah. Margaret, bless you, darling. And uh, love, no. to your, love to your, uh, your breeze block. And... Uh, Thanks for talking to us. I look forward to catching up to you in the weeks ahead. Thanks again. Uh, 
Thank you. Alan, can I just say a hello to Pauline Boyle, who's listening, Oops. who's been one of my best friends, and she, I introduced her to Al, uh, Alan Robson's night elves years and years ago. Wonderful. So, I'm glad you're still there. You. Thanks for coming on, Margaret, and no, all the best. You, you. Take care. Bye-bye. Right, Andrew, take care. Bye-bye. Isn't, isn't that better than, than Grand Designs? A real person. Just got to build it with breeze blocks. What? <laughs> Whoa. And fortunately, a Herman's a builder. Even so, can you imagine taking that on on your own? And with all due respect to Margaret, she says, I'm the labourer. <sighs> the air turns blue sometimes. Hmm. When did the air turn blue for you last? 0191 488 Text Alan plus your message to 61054. Or get your emails in. Alan at the night Of course, more importantly, give us a call right now on the big one. Do you know, last week we had Craig from Peter Lee who is prone to send me photographs of his Sunday dinner. Damn it, he's done it again. Beef. Now, hang Just get your head around this. On a posh plate, too. Beef, pork, turkey, gammon. <laughs> what? With roast tatties. Turnip, green beans, sweet corn, mash, stuffing, and cabbage. And he adds, with geet thick beef gravy. Mmm, enjoy. And he's got little laughing emojis. Craig, it's not funny. I'm drowning in saliva here because the Yorkshire pudding, he didn't mention the Yorkshire pudding on you. There is a Yorkie. And uh, the gravy just making it all swim. Now, because I come in here super early to get uh, various things together, um, and, and also working on the other thing, get more days, of course, um, I miss out on my Sunday dinner, and I'm getting it tomorrow. Oh, yeah. So when you're all trying, get, you know, getting a packet of crisps out the machine, or queuing for a Greg's, oh, yeah, I will be eating <laughs> that. I'll get my own back tomorrow. Can't believe, though. Beef, pork, turkey, and gammon, and then psh, the lot on top, all the trimmings on top of that. That's just, that's just beyond belief. We're getting a lot more songs and veggie things. The Foggins have been on the Fognogs. Uh, Kale House Rock by Elvis. Don't Go Breaking My Chard by <laughs> Elton John and Kiki. Lulu's hit, of course. Uh, you know, you make me want a sprout. Uh, Michael Bublé, Haven't Met Cosette. And Neil Diamond's classic, Swede, Caroline. Brilliant. They're all good. Why not? We get some peculiar ones, you know, like the, the Beatles film, Chard Days Night. I've never... What is Chard? I don't think I've ever had Chard. It's been mentioned like four times already. What exactly is Chard? What do you have it with? If anybody knows, do tell me. But I do particularly rate this one. Claire. She's in Bogner Regis, and she says... Ch -ch Chive talking. Hey, that's a spice. I think it's a spice, isn't it? But we'll have it. Fruit, veg. Songs with fruit and veg in the title. Ch -ch -ch Chive talking by the Bee Gees. Uh, if you can beat it, beat it. Nathan is on the line to tell us all about something called the Gorgeous Jody Show. Hi, Nathan. Hello, Alan. Hello, How mate. Doing? I'm doing <laughs> well. Tell us all about it. What is it? When is it? And uh, uh, everything else. Right, so the event's on Friday, the 4th of October, so right. it's Friday evening, which our doors open at 7. So basically there's a number of things going on on it, but it's more to inspire people to have a bit of fun. Um, we're going to have, uh, last time I think I mentioned to you that we're, we're setting up a gorgeous Geordie's dance group. I don't know if you remember that. I do. Uh, it's in the style of like the Magic Mike, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, so that's really coming together. It's five lads. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, they've done, they've done fantastic, these lads, honestly. And are these guys all with, the, like, the raked stomachs and everything? I mean, are, are we um, talking hot, hot to trot here, are we? Uh, not all of them, actually. They, there's a variation of... Uh, cause ultimately, what it's about is that they feel confident in their self. Right. Um, so they're, they're all sorts of shapes. But oh. I think one of the lads got abs at the moment. I don't know whether they all will by the, uh, <laughs> by by the, the time the, the event comes around. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and the, the important bit about the Gorgeous Geordies, we've also got some individual stories, and they're quite moving stories as well. Right. Um, so the idea is there's going to be, like, the video, which we've already crafted out, which comes on with, like, sort of 
moving music so people can relate to it. it might be some tears on the night and then obviously they come out and they sort of strike their stuff so they've kind of got either an evening dress or right. they're wearing a bikini or it's just varied what they're going to be wearing really that's great I, mean, I love the idea when i first heard about it how do people get all the tickets then yes well, they just go on to uh, gorgeousgeordies.co.uk and they, there's basically a link there. So it, it, they, all the VIP seats are taken now, so that's excellent. There's standard seats still available, so they, it's either £20 right. or they can buy a table of 10 uh -huh. £200, and right. it includes food as well. Fantastic. So it's all there. What else is on? I mean, you mentioned that the, the gorgeous... Jody's, you know, the, the, the male dance troupe. What else yeah. is, is going on? Talk us through whatever, whatever you get for your money because this is well worth talking about. Yeah, sure. Obviously, on top of the individual stories, the fashion walk and the and the actual dance group, there's also Jeff Moll, who's doing... He's a local talent. Yeah. I don't know if you've heard of Jeff Moll, but he's doing three songs. He's also actually in the Gorgeous Geordie dance group. Right. Uh, we've got Cal Halbert, who does impressions. He was on Britain's Got Talent. So he'd be doing lots of different uh, impressions, so he's brilliant to watch. Right. And there's also a top motivation speaker, Neil Martin. He's right. actually not from the area, but he'd be great as well. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, lots of fun stuff going on there. There'll be um, – we've also got a young girl at 11 who's going to be performing. Hopefully she can bring a, a dance group with her because she's doing an Irish dance. Right. She's also doing some songs as well. So, uh, as you can hear, there's quite a lot of variation. Absolutely, and of course, it's it's going to run and run. So let's uh, great course. Let's take it all the way. Lovely to hear from you, Nathan. Give us that website again. Yep. So it's gorgeousjordies at dot co dot uk. Brilliant. Good to hear from and, you, Nathan. Uh, Thank you, man. I better mention one more thing about obviously it's for a good cause. It all goes to money for fat. No. which is our local charity. So I thought I'd mention that one. Uh, no, absolutely. Well done. Thanks again, Nathan. Thank you. Make it happen, man. Good luck to you. A lot of messages coming in, and again, a lot of them, <laughs> a lot of them are uh, well, fruit and vegetable related, as you'd imagine. Hello, team. Says Chris with a K. Madonna, like a pear. There you go. Uh, Metallica, enter Banana Man <laughs> instead of a Sandman. Looking forward to the rest of the show. Jackie on Facebook. Fruit. Has anybody suggested? Hey, Mr. Tangerine Man. No. Missed the first few minutes tonight. Naughty. Make sure you're there early uh, next week, Jack. And Alan Fruit of Veg song, Amazing Grape. Loving the show. Judy and Darling, Darlington. Uh, two more. Ros Batista. Uh, night Elves. One week after Bonfire Night, the Christmas decorations are going up this year. Hashtag because I'm happy. One week after Bonfire Night. That's the 5th of November. Uh, yeah, I think this is. But you see, have you noticed how it's it's everything's merging into one? Halloween is merging into bonfire night is merging into Christmas decorations. But that's a good. You see, I'm actually in favour of this. Absolutely. Now you're talking about neighbours. I did say before. What's the funniest thing? You know, the most interesting thing you've seen. Well, um, uh, one of you has responded, and I thank you for that. No names. Alan, the most interesting thing I've seen was my neighbour being handcuffed, arrested, and put in a police van. After months of nothing but antisocial and oddball behaviour, it transpires he's been previously arrested for trying to meet a minor for sex. Police indicated he's been up to similar offences presently. The whole community is horrified, and we're all eager to absolutely see the back of him. Now, but you see, we hear that the, the North East and uh, Liverpool areas are the two where people watch, people keep toot, people twitch the curtain. We're the nosiest. And if we're catching creatures like this, it's a damn good thing that we are. Where it was sent. We got Rob from Bishop Auckland. We asked about the, you know, people putting Christmas decorations up early. What, what's your what's your swing on this, Rob? Hello, Rob. Hi, Amir. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. What's what's your stand on the Christmas decorations? And are you got yours up? <laughs> no, I never <laughs> swore there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, I mean, I think you're right in where you're coming from. I mean, as, as soon as Easter happens, you know, mm. and then it's the next thing, the next thing, the next yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. That's always a commercial con at the end of the day, isn't it? <laughs> well, I suppose so, but, you know, you get Christmas. If we look at it the other way, let's get out the other end. 
It's New yeah. Year, you get New Year, and we've had Christmas Eve and Christmas Day and Boxing yeah. Day. They're all three in, important ones. Then we've had yeah. New Year's Eve. Then we've had New Year's Day. And then, do you know what I mean? It's kind yeah, of... Just to give, give some people something to look forward to. We're in free fall till, till Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't get a start on Valentine's Day, will you? <laughs> But it's kind of like that, isn't it? Because you, you you start off in, uh, well, Halloween, because it's a big one for us. Halloween yeah. and then Bonfang Night. Thing, and, whatever, yeah, yeah right. and, then, and then you're off to work. Because once you get past Bonfang Night, you're quite right. It's the the shops, are just, you, you kind of miss it. It's it's everywhere, isn't it? But no, uh, I, I, I it's like the adverts on the telly. They seem to go with it as well, don't they? Uh, oh, full on. But it, it's <laughs> it's the adverts and that... Uh, Saying things like "get all your, your Halloween costumes from get all your," however, I'm ugly, I'm, I'm ugly enough the rest of the year. I don't want to be, <laughs> you know what I mean. The thing is that what I noticed, I was in like like a garden centre kind of place, and they yeah. ha- they had the back doors open to where they keep all the stuff, and they've mm-hmm. and I saw this was just two three days ago. I saw Santa's cabin. Oh, it's ready. Right. They they've been sticking on the you know the glitter and the red and the white Reindeer and, it, and all, that all of that it's a, it's all waiting and uh, <laughs> and yeah. uh, in the shop they've got all those things where you go to put your hand in a sweetie bowl and a skeleton mm-hmm. jumps out of the bowl and goes I knew you would like it sweetie <laughs> what <laughs> what <laughs> you know you hide it in the sweets and it sends the sweets all over the place when somebody some kid tries to put that's gonna kill somebody that. Mind you, I have to say, I'm going to have to buy one. It, it's just too good. It's, it's one of them things, isn't it? <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to run with it. No, But, I mean, are you up for it? Are you, are you not? Where do you stand on all of this? Uh, with Christmas this year, I'm looking forward to it, to be honest, because um, I've done I'm with a new partner, um, right. things like that, you know, so Great. we're both really looking forward to it. And, um, and also you've had health issues as well. Yeah, I've, I've got my last uh, chemotherapy session on Wednesday, so I'm looking forward to getting that out of the way. Yeah. Um, Congratulations. It's, it's been best part of... I think it's just over nine months now I've been doing it for. And, um, Has it shown, no, shown it's, good it's signs, though? A bit. Yeah, 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 so we'll hope. I mean, I've just put it on with the kind of thing, you know? I mean, it's not a bit of a certain day, really, is it? No, you no. Know? no, but so, it's, a, it's a nightmare. Uh, I mean, I, yeah, how's it been affecting you? Because some, some people um, take it real bad. Well, so I've been getting wrong left, right, and centre, to be honest, because I keep on trying to do stuff all the time, because I'm one of these people where I just cannot sit still, right, you know? Right, right. Um, so I managed to keep myself sort of going work wise and whatever, like mm-hmm. doing building maintenance and stuff, yeah. up until I think it was my seventh cycle of chemo, six or seven cycles, and then I, I had to stop. Like, right. um, yeah, I was getting wrong with loads of people, so, <laughs> especially my oncologist. Yeah, um, yeah I bet, I bet. But, uh, we always know, we always so think on. we know better though, don't we? That's the thing. Oh, well, that's it, yeah. <laughs> uh, until you're stuck in bed going. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> but right. um, there was a little bit of a funny thing happened was tonight. Um, What's that? Uh, we knew Paul and I. She lives like next door to the flat where I've got, but we both going hers. And I'm sure you must have had this at some point before in your life. <laughs> your, your partner goes to the bathroom, and she even said it was Denny's the toilet before I got in the shower and all that. Right. I was like, no, no, I'm fine. In she goes, and literally about a minute and 30 seconds later, I felt this rumble in my stomach. I thought, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So I thought, oh, sorry, I was next door, going to my flat, and, you know, go to the toilet. So I ran on the flat door, locked. I thought, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Could you Come sneak back. in and, 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 frankly, drop one without a knowing? No. <laughs> right, OK, oh dear. The, the very small flats, mate. Yeah, yeah. So what, but, what did um, you do then? Uh, panicked. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so I come running back in the earth, but I'm thinking, right, where the effing hell are these keys kind of thing, you know? So I'm, you know, that dance what you do when you burst. <laughs> you know, you're trying to hold it in. I'm thinking, yeah, where's the keys? Yeah. The cat's in the way. I'm chipping over the cat and all sorts. Managed to, managed to eventually find my keys and get them mine. And honestly, mate, it was a photo finish. Oh, whoa, <laughs> whoa. Hey, well done. So, it's funny because yeah. when you when you got health issues, and, and I know some people who are like proper diabetic, you know, diabetic type one, yeah. if they're going to go to the loo, they've got to go to the loo, you know, and it's not like... 
I need to go to the loo now. I mean now. I <laughs> need this second. No, no, no. <laughs> Stop with you. Me with you. <laughs> hey, no, um, that's brilliant. Anything else while you're on then, Rob? Um, yeah, um, somebody mentioned before, but you're on about the fruit and veg thing and all that. Yeah. I did have one. It was living on a pear. I know it's terrible, but, you know, it's better than out. Come on in. Living on a pear. Oh, living on a pear. There bon you go, Jovi. Bon Jovi. Right. Why not? Brilliant. And the other quick thing I was going to say is, can you remember the um, the cloggy nozzle? What I'm mentioned here does it go? I do. Yeah, I kind of can't pass the garage the same way again. <laughs> <laughs> and um, just to finish up with uh, the last thing, you know, you're on about like little things that make you happy and cheer you up and things like that. Yeah. Um, I rescued this cat from like. I was with my ex-partner, blah, blah, blah. And it was, uh, me and her rescued this cat, my ex-partner, and then I rescued this cat from my ex-partner, who's in prison now, blah, right. blah, blah. But, um, <laughs> all right, Merlin, this cat absolutely tortures me partner. I mean, literally tortures her. Because you, you love the cat, the cat loves you, and she's come onto the scene. No, it's not so much that. I mean, the cat loves her a bit, but he's just a crafty little kid. Because <laughs> 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 he loves being lying there, right? And then she'll go to walk past into the kitchen. No claws involved or anything like that. Well, you just like cuff her across like the back of the ankle or something like that, you know. Oh, and man. obviously, you on the other side of the table, and you just see this tail going past like jaws. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Duh, the, but, uh, I used to. I used to have, used to have I've, a little. I've even, I've even downloaded the uh, the jaws theme tune and played it through the speakers. <laughs> He's coming to the kitchen. Me, and he has. You know there's trouble. Excellent. Hey Rob, great talking to you. Thanks for coming on. And good luck with that last key. So proud of you. Well done. Spot on. Thanks a lot, Cheers, man. All the best. Oh, I used to have a, a little black cat. It, it was the spawn of the devil. And it used to hide in the shadow on stairs in the living room, like an open, open kind of living room. Every time I went past, it would jump on my head and go, <laughs> and then disappear, leaving you in its first thing in the morning. You didn't know where you were. And you're dotty in the first place. We're going to be talking a little bit to Billy Ocean. Very, very soon indeed. When I was little, I used to have a red light in my uh, in my bedroom at home and uh, didn't get anybody knocking. Uh, then again, I got a contraceptive face, so that's probably what it was. Anyway, let's get cracking. We have, lurking on the lane, it's George. And it's George from Lanchester. First time on Greatest Hits. Hello, George. Hello there, Alan. How are you doing, me I'm old all friend? right, man. Good to hear from you. How are you? I hear you, you've been poorly. Well, yeah, you know, up and down, but you, oh, you, you've got to get on with it, haven't you? You do, absolutely. So you're OK now? Or are you are heading, uh, heading yeah, for better? paddling along, paddling oh, along. Right, you are. You're Getting fa- old quite disgracefully. <laughs> How's the family? How's the missus? Uh, not good, not good. No. She's she's quite poor, actually. Oh, my goodness. Well, give but, him a love, please. That's that's a damn shame. Eh? Give him a love, if you would. I will. I will, oh, Alan, because she is quite, quite poor. Right. But uh, hasn't even been ma- making cheese scones, so there you are. That I tells know. you how bad it is. I tell you, I, I, this is that's the equivalent of Picasso stopping painting. Exactly. It's that, <laughs> it's that good, I know. But it's great to uh, hear you on air again. Well, thank you, man. Let's and hopefully this will move on to, to bigger and better things. Absolutely. That's the, that's the target. Well, onward and upward. Always. And, and, <laughs> and the thing is, Alan, onward and upward and right up them if they don't do what you want. <laughs> no, it really thank is you, great to hear you on air uh, again. It was good to hear you too, man. This is your place, you know. I know that. It's, uh... You're still... You're still the king on air. There's no bless. doubt about it. Thank you very much for that. Well, how do you feel then about clagging your Christmas decorations up the day after bonfire night then, George? Is that well, your I style? Think, I think, I think, well, you see, uh, you do that uh, and uh, straight after bonfire night, Christmas decorations up and the day after that, the Easter bunny. <laughs> and, and then before you know it, you're back around to bonfire night. Yeah. Because I know somebody that instead, because they didn't like doing their tree, they had one of those trees that was, it was a fake tree, but it was in three parts. Yeah. They had like a top of a tree, a middle of a tree, bottom of a tree, and you would decorate it all and then just put the three bits in the attic, then dust them off, put them all back together again, where, well, and his tree was up in ten minutes. I mean, it's it's not the daftest the thing. Point? Where's the point? <laughs> 
you know, it's uh, it, it's great when you when you uh, got a, a Christmas tree and you get some young ones, little ones, right, uh, uh, and uh, they, they decorate the the lower branches, things they can reach. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and they they love it because Christmas is real. I always thought though that the whole point of a Christmas tree was for everybody to you know to get the whole family around, but especially kids. Yeah. And you all do that together. It's not the same when the the tree wasn't there ten minutes ago, but it is now. Oh, because okay. it's all done. You've got to. It's the doing. It's the giving it, well, time. That's I it. Think. It's yeah. the doing. It's the taking part. Yes. Uh, uh, and and then uh, you get the parcels under the tree, mm. uh, and uh, I say, well, you know, the, the biggest the biggest heap of parcels. If it's not mine, there's going to be hell to pay. <laughs> but I mean, George, you're old enough to have under a tree not just. Well, presumably you wouldn't get an orange in your stocking when you were a kid because they, I, they I, hadn't been invented then, and had a, they? And a potato. <laughs> you know, you know th- things like that. A bit of cold, and, and if you were really lucky, a penny. You know, a, an old ah, penny. There you go, proper money. Yeah, uh, and, and but Christmas was real. Mm. Uh, and e- even though uh, my parents didn't have much at all, uh, I, I remember... It was 1951 when uh, I first saw a roast chicken. Wow. And, and my believe goodness. it or not, um, a, a, a chicken, a fresh chicken then mm. cost more than a damn great piece of roast beef. Yeah, I can believe it. And it's now totally the other way round. But it's, it's changed in a lot of ways because when you were doing that kind of thing, I, I wasn't on the planet, but I came along a little bit later and... My Christmas stocking was about probably about the length of your arm, like a football sock, yes. you, you would say. Yeah. But in it, there'd be a couple of sweets of one sort or another, usually a bar of this or a yeah. tube of Smarties or something. However, the rest of it was filled up with there'd be an apple in there, there'd be an orange in there, yeah. there'd, there'd be a, a half a bowl of nuts that you couldn't eat because you didn't have a hammer on you at the yeah. time. Uh, at the bottom... They they might be if you were lucky some coppers or yeah you know, that's right five pences or ten pences or that but there was always the apple and, and the orange in it you know and but yeah. now but nowadays it just seems the kid gets something like a like a duvet cover full of and it's all toys and yeah. electricals and and it's how much they can spend yeah uh, it's crazy. I well remember my nephew and his. Uh, uh, first kid, he was uh, about two years old. Mm. He, he spent literally several hundred pounds uh, on Christmas presents right. for the kid. Wow. And the kid took everything out of the box and had a whale of a time playing with the boxes. I, I, I agree with that. I've, you, I've you seen know, that. And he said that put things into perspective. Well, it was Paul. funny because recently, I'm not going to say where because I'll get shot. Because it was a charity do, and you don't criticise charity do's. Well, I'm going to. I'm not criticising the do. I think it was a lovely thing that they did. But posh people had a car boot sale. Now, I'm not going to say where it was. No, no. I'm not going to say where it was. But posh people having a car boot sale, they, some of them were selling on racks ball gowns. Now, people that go to car boot sales, and I'm not knocking them, no, but you, no. go, you go to a car boot sale to you get it. You know what you're going to buy. But to get it the cheapest you can. So to see this person say, "How much is the ball gown?" Me daughter's having a, yeah. you know, having a, a school do, and that. Oh, geez, you look lovely in that. And this person obviously spent something like a grand on this, yeah. <laughs> on this ball gown to have the woman say, "I'll give you two pounds for it." Was just the look on the face was worth was worth going, but. You see the toys that posh kids get, and there's tons of them because they've had a look at them, they played with them once, decided it wasn't for them, and they've just walked away or played with a box or went back yeah. on the computer again. It just seems that it, it it's not nothing to do with reason anymore. It's just how much can I get because if I don't get everything... Uh, you might think I don't love him or her. You yeah, know? that's right. And that's crazy. Mind, I do, I do remember the the age of the catalogue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and and uh, parents, because they, they couldn't 
fork out uh, a lot of money all at once. Mm-hmm. You know, they 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 look in the catalogue, and you you could guarantee um, that there'd be uh, uh, kids uh, had made very nice presents, but you knew fine. Well, mm. uh, all, all the grown ups knew fine. Yeah. It, it was come out of the catalogue. No, absolutely. I mean, my mother had one of them co-op things where you. You go to the co-op every week and you'd put oh, yes. put a pound down or you'd put yeah. whatever, whatever you could afford after you'd bought your shop. You yes. stick it in that. My mum's number, 55248. And then at the end of the year, coming up back end of November, she'd go see how much money she'd saved. Yes. Then she could go in the co-op. It was all clever. Then you could go in the co-op and you could get posher food. That's right. Board games, toys for the kids, or everything you needed really for you. For your Christmas was there, but it was it was just clever marketing from the co-op because that's a catalogue without actually having a catalogue. Yes, it was. <laughs> it, it was um, it was re- really a, cl- a clever way to do it, and yeah. it was good for the for the uh, the punters as well because sure. they got a bit of what you used to call divvy. Yes, you know absolutely. the dividend. dividend. You got a bit added on, <laughs> uh, and uh, it was the only the only way that uh, working class. Uh, Parents could, uh, you know, provide a nice Christmas for the kids. Yeah, for sure. And it was, uh, I think it was more real because there was more thought and there was more effort and everybody appreciated it because mm. they, they knew it sort of more or less took every last penny that, that people had. Sure. sure. And uh, the, the, kids, the kids enjoyed it more when they got less. Well, I agree with that because I think the one thing that, that always seems to get missed from the equation is the time that a parent... Because my dad didn't spend any time with me at all. Never... I can't, and I was in the car the other day and we were talking about how, um, you know, parents, uh, their their duty really, their responsibility is to love their their child and try and create a child that will achieve more than they did, whatever whatever yeah. that, whatever that was. And uh, I was asked, when you were playing with your dad, what kind of games did you play? And I never, ever played a game with my dad. He took me fishing just because I, I had to go somewhere and couldn't leave me in the house. But uh, I was just told, go and play in the woods. <laughs> okay. And they, while they were doing their thing. Um, had my dad played with me, on a Christmas day, because my mother didn't really either, and I was a single child. You ever try to play magnetic football when you're both sides? It just doesn't work. It's, it doesn't work. It doesn't, it doesn't work. work because work you, you, you make sure that uh, one particular side will win. It's mm. inevitable. It's like playing yourself <laughs> at chess because uh, the way your brain works, it... it Always uh, has to have. Uh, you've got to be on the side of somebody. No, absolutely. And, and that side will win, yeah. because no matter how hard you try, you will cheat to win. <laughs> there's, there's no doubt about it. But you're right. If, if uh, you know fathers that played with the kids, spend time. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It, it uh, makes a difference, man. Well, my my dad got me interested in in gardening. At first, I thought that you know, out in the cold and the wet, ah, it's not good. Don't like this. Mm. But when when you actually saw things grow, and yeah. and in in those days, um, the working class people, uh, you, the the man of the house always had the back garden filled with vegetables yeah, because absolutely. you you needed the the uh, mm. the vegetables because it was. Uh, instead of buying them, you had them. So it, sure, it helped. Money. You, it provided for the home. And also on top of that, if if your dad's shown you how plants grow, he's spending time with you. He's bonding with you. Yeah. He's, he's laughing at your little jokes, and you're laughing at him being being silly or chucking soil about. All those kind of things, and I never had, and I really regret them. I know some people have dads that are. Oh, you know, they're kind of roughy tufty, and especially in the northeast, miners and what have you. Some of them were not the most demonstrative. No. But, but I do think it's a shame. Hey, George, it's been fabulous having you back. So thank you for yeah. calling in. Now, sh- are we 
are we uh, doing the thing where we can ring once a week or once a fortnight, whatever? No, it's, it's, it's done? at the present moment, it's anybody can ring uh, on, of a Sunday and then when we get one week back, it'll be back to normal, one call per person per week again. Yeah. That's yeah. the plan. I'm but sure. lo- lovely to hear. Love to the to the missus, and let's yeah. hope she gets well soon. Thanks, mate. Thank Thanks. you, George. All, Take all care. All the best, Alan, and it's great to have you on here, mate. Thank you so much. This George from Lanchester. And we are going to take a very swift break. And then we've got H. Don't know whether it's the guy out of steps. I'm thinking it's possibly not. This is Night Owls on Greatest Hits Radio. You never know who's going to call next. 0191 488 3188. Greatest Hits Radio. And I just realised that I have seen a chard. There you go. A Swiss chard, in fact. And do you know, Sue from Washington sent me a picture of a Swiss chard. I'm hoping to get uh, one of the, the Foggins on because they've put me right about... Um, about chives as well. Chive is, is in fact a vegetable. Here's me talking about it like it was uh, rosemary or thyme, you know, one of those kind of things. But no, it is not. Uh, I've been put right. However, I always thought Swiss chard was rhubarb. But because it looks like it looks like rhubarb, doesn't it? Or is that it may just be me. And also Mark's been on and he says, um, Loving Sunday nights, now you're back on air. My ear is blocked with a build-up of wax, but I can still hear you. And he's uh, noticed that the Blakeney twins are back on Neighbours. They still look as sexy as they did in the 90s, and they're 53 now. Wow, there's something. Foodie songs as well. Sue has come up with turnips from Amsterdam. Please give a shout-out to Auntie Jenny, Isabel, Angela, and the rest of the crew. Thank you for that. Quick piece of music. Then we've got here, as promised. And this is a track that uh, has been copied and and it was put out again to, to be a, another dance hit. But I'm sorry, as far as I'm concerned, original is best. The Use Corporation.
where the badger came into it. But that's Rock the Boat Hughes Corporation. We promised you a chat with H, and here is H himself. Hello, H. Hello, Alan. Hello. How are you doing, mate? I'm very well. What can we do for you, man? Well, I, I was going to tell you about my fridge. Ooh, but, what's, um, happened? what's happened? First, I was, first, I'll tell you about chard. Oh, do, um, please. <laughs> it does look like rhubarb. That's a Swiss chard, but it's it's like smaller than rhubarb. Right. And your, your green chard, your ordinary chard, looks like uh, artichoke. So what, what, how do you it's eat a, it? What do you? It's, what do you... A green, it's a green leafy vegetable. Right. Um, I mean the the young chard, fresh young chard, you can eat raw in salads and things. Right. Never tasted it, but I will. The... I promise you, I will. The older, mature stuff, the tougher stuff, you just boil like cabbage. So it's the yeah. leaves you eat particularly? Yes. yeah. It's the, it's leaves. the leaves. Right, yes. okay. So yeah. I might, I might have it in a salad then, possibly. Yeah, yeah. and going right. back to your last caller with his garden and, and his Christmas, Yeah. Um, it's where they make all the toys, you know, Chard Valley. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Chard Valley. Poof. If you were uh, here... Poof! You did got a dosh across the lug for that. Oh, anyway, that's br- brilliant. Um, nice one. I was just telling you, but you know, all these, uh, you met me want to sprout and chart <laughs> years night. And I thought, well, I best ring up and tell you about my fridge because I got up this morning mm-hmm. and as I walked past the fridge, I could have sworn the onions were singing a BJ song. Mm-hmm. You know, just as I walked past the fridge, uh, when I opened the door, it was just the chives talking. Hey! There you go. You were on the same page. Just had a one in that's come all the way from Dublin in Ireland. Raymond has sent Black Teddy. <laughs> Bla- <laughs> <laughs> I think you've got to have the Northern Parlance for it, but Black Teddy, bam, ba, lamb, that's pretty good. Anyway. Oh, I, yeah. yeah good yeah. stuff. Anything else, then, Itch? No, um, well, just a quick couple. You know, if um, anybody choking, sure. give them a bottle of Dutch beer. Dutch beer? Why? Yeah, Heineken manoeuvre. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Nice um, one. You know, <laughs> and check a trade. Always, always use people from check a trade. Alan, I got this carpenter. I paid him up front. Make me a double bed. And he'd done a bunk. <laughs> Nice stuff. But I'm, I'm not going to keep it up all night, mate. Uh, you could do that comfortably. Good work, H. Thanks for coming on, man. Thank you very much, Alan. Cheers, Appreciate man. it. Bye-bye. Uh, don't forget your text as well. That number is 61054. 61054. Make sure you uh, you get you get used to that text. It's a new number for you. 61054. And then Lee's done it, Lee from New Big and By the Sea, just to let you know how I'm getting on, doing a lot better. I went to Portugal for a week, so I've missed you. Uh, it was 28 degrees for the whole week, and it's freezing in Newcastle upon Tyne. Left, uh, left in San- Satsumas, left in Satsumas, oh, I see, and French, they are perfectly fine, champion in the fridge. And also, Alan from Northumberland says, uh, decorate my house all the time in the winter. Halloween, St Andrew's Day on the 30th of November, not to be forgotten, uh, before Christmas. It brightens the winter up after a lovely summer, says Alan in Northumberland. And why the devil not? So it's all good. Get some more in for me. I love this one from Raymond. Uh, I am in bed listening to you. 18 months ago, I had an appointment at the QE. The doctor said if I didn't stop drinking, I'd be dead in two years. I stopped immediately. I've got liver problems. I had been drinking 20 years plus lager. Just by stopping the lager, butter, sugar, no training, I've lost four and a half stone. I feel great. If I can do it, anybody can. I really do miss the night hours across the midweek. Hurry up and get it going on. Hey, I'm doing my best, man. I did support you, and thank you for that. Um, I hope it was to do with me, because I didn't... Uh, he says, I, I did support you in giving a little to get your show back on the road. You're a proper bloke, best of luck. Uh, I know nothing about any of the money to Ray, but just uh, not me, uh, I have to say. 
but thank you very much for your kindness, whatever it was that you did. Uh, very sweet indeed. Uh, let's get back to the calls and see who else we've got lurking on the lane. Oh, hang on. It's Louise in South Shields. Hello, Louise. Hello, Alan. I'm starting to get a regular now. Hooray! <laughs> That's a, it's all good. So what you got for us tonight, then? Um, what it was is it's just in relation to what uh, was posted on Facebook, like the little things that make you happy. Yeah. Um, with me, it's, it's not really so much a little thing. It's it's my family that made me happy. Um, recently, I've obviously my little boy he's just started nursery, so I'm feeling a bit lost in the morning without him. I, th- um, I thought that would be setting you free. Well, yeah, it does. And it probably will in the next few weeks, but it's obviously just been his first week gone. He's due to his second week tomorrow, so it's like still a bit weird. And you've been taking you've been taking him down and then leaving him and then coming home and crying. Yeah. Is that is that what you've been doing? Yeah, that would be about right. <laughs> well, he, he he managed the first three days. He was perfectly fine, and then obviously Thursday and Friday morning he started getting a bit sort of teary still. So, right, and right. I've just literally turned away and gone. I'm running. Because I remember Cause I the will. I remember the very first time. My mother took me to infant school. You know, first day. First of all, she had to prize me off the settee because I got a good grip and I wasn't letting go. My dad wasn't in because he'd, he'd pick me up. Uh, however, I was, I'm not going, I'm not going. Yes, you are going. All your, all your friends are going. I don't want to go. But I remember we got to the room where my very first class was going to be. Yeah. And there was a few kids already sitting at desks and mams decorating the back of the room, you know. Not very few dads, but mostly mams. And at the front of the classroom, there was the blackboard. No such thing as whiteboards back then. Blackboard. And in the corner, like a sand pit. Little yeah. kidsy, kidsy sand pit. And I, I thought, whoa. Because my only holiday was going to Tynemouth for one day a year. Yeah. Sand. You never saw sand unless it was a building site. Sand. So I was in it, putting, you know, making shapes out of uh, butterflies and fish and, you know, the, all the things that you've got in a sand pit. And I turned round and my mum had gone. <gasps> Heartbreak. <laughs> Bubbling for a month. And I, I bet my mother, no matter how close to home she got by then, we were about a mile away. She'd have heard my scream when I realised she'd gone. Because I must have been a right little slavery now when I was Ooh. when I when I was little. I mean, your your lads took he, the first few days. He was brilliant at it. Yeah, and then he's realised by Thursday and Friday he's like, oh. <laughs> so hopefully he's he's probably thought in his mind, I'm not taking him back because he's had the weekend off. So it's going to be fun and games tomorrow morning. <sighs> Right. And, and, and prize them off the set. Hey, I think he's been having secret conversations with you. <laughs> Is that what he's been doing? Getting a good grip on and then... Yeah, uh, get a good grip on. And Daddy's out at work, so I'll just... Uh, I'll not move for Mummy. <laughs> yeah, if it was me, Daddy would have picked the settee and me up and just carried the... You know, there was no way that I would get away with that. But with me yeah. mom, with me mom, And I remember on about the third day, she said, she said to one of the other mothers, will you come in and help me get Alan off the settee? And they think that sounds odd, but I just used to get a leg under the bottom leg. Yeah. And it had one of those, it wasn't a very nice set, but it was like a pretendy leather, but it had a gap so you could get under where the arms are yeah. and get a real tight. <laughs> what they needed was a cattle prod, just go, zip, hang. And then, that would have that would have been it. But it took two two grown women to get me off that set. They usually, but uh, I used to. I thought it was a betrayal. She she's took me to this room. She's and then she's left me. I I, yeah. I, I felt that with all my heart. So I can imagine what the Ben you know is, is Ben's probably feeling exactly the same. She brings me here. Because she doesn't want to be with me anymore. Exactly. <laughs> it's all right. He, he got his revenge the other day. I put, I put my hand in his pocket and there was a lot of sand in it. <laughs> <laughs> Not what you want in your washer, that's for sure. Oh, no, but never mind. Never mind. It's one of them things. No, it is. Um, also, like, obviously, the Christmas decorations going up. Yes. Well, after the summer, the way I work it is I've got Halloween. 
I've got like a few birthdays between uh, and then my birthday and then bonfire like, the next night and then Christmas. So because mm. it's my birthday, it's like I want to put my Christmas decorations up as soon as possible. Yeah, no, no, <laughs> I, 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 I get that. But you see, I think if you if your house is a bit different, because you know the this cliche, a change is as good as a rest kind of thing. I get yeah. that. I get that absolutely. And uh, every year, traditionally, you'd buy a new bit of tat. Instead, you got the snowman with the hips. You know the one that went side to side to yeah. uh, some Merry Christmas tune. This year, it's the reindeer playing the saxophone. I think I'm going to have to go for more tat, but it's different. It's not like yeah. last year, because this year is going to be the best year ever. That's the plan. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I like, like that whole idea. But does you, as long as your birthday doesn't disappear into the into the whole period, you know what I mean? Oh, definitely not. I, I make my birthday worthwhile. Good, good, good. <laughs> Can't <laughs> <laughs> if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have that birthday. I would have it the, the birthday I was supposed to be born on, hopefully. Right. So there you are. Ah, sweet. Hey, That's Louise. What you definitely make me mum laugh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, thank you so much for coming on. Lovely to hear from you, Louise. You too. Keep I'll on keeping on. Soon. Bless Bye. you. Thanks, darling. Bye bye. See, to become a regular, all you've got to do is pick up a telephone and give me a call. Now, I'm going to play you uh, something just, it's just one of the great songs of all time, and I was talking to the drummer of the Electric Light Orchestra. He was also the drummer of The Move, if you can remember The Move from all those years ago, Blackberry Way, and uh, uh, I can hear the grass grow fire, and for the fire briefly, for the fire briefly, that one, and California Man Tonight, Chinatown. Move had a lot of hits and then became... Electric Light Orchestra. I asked him about, well, the worst thing about his body, because drummers are, you know, they're, they're built to last, aren't they? The worst thing, oh, that's that, that's a no-brainer, <laughs> that one. Yeah. I was touring with, with ELO uh, on the Time Tour, 81, mm. a European tour. Yeah. Suddenly, out of nowhere, just doubled up. I was in Lou Clark, I remember, walking through in Frankfurt yeah. and literally doubled up in the most astonishing pain I've never felt anything like it which which I endured for about three or four days oh. had about three or four different uh, diagnostic yeah. uh, of different doctors saying what it was yeah. who were all totally wrong I eventually went home and my own doctor said, "Oh, you've got kidney stones." Oh, I've had them. They're, they're and I've funny. never, I've never had pain like that. They're, they're not all, funny. Not funny at no. all. So I, I no. sympathise. We, <laughs> I, I have been peeled off that wall too, and it's not not fun. Tell me your stories, kidney stones. How have you dealt with them? Are we going to delve down that avenue? It's a tough one. Kidney stone stories. Where you found one? Where? How they got it out? Uh, did they give you the dreaded stent? And how did you get to stand out? Because this Christmas gone, they made me take it out myself and I couldn't do it. Why well, you had to do it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> probably the worst afternoon of a Christmas a man could ever have. And it was Christmas Eve that uh, it had to come it had to come out because I went into hospital the week before. Oh good gracious. Not funny. Tell me your kidney stone. Tell you, trust me, if anybody's ever had a kidney stone, you're going to want to tell me your tale. The Voice of the North. Alan Robson's Night Owls. The phone-in that gets you talking. Greatest Hits Radio. Yeah, we've <laughs> We have a lot of people now texting the word Alan, plus your message. To 61054. 61054. Remember, that is the texty thing. Or you can go uh, Alan, A L A N, at the night owls, all one word, dot net. That's the two easiest ways to get through. Big thanks to Margaret in France, who sent some pictures of the house making progress. It's looking great. Beautiful looking place there. They're in too. We wish them well with that. Looking for the fruit and veg songs. Oh my goodness, you've you've gone with uh, this one's coming from Chris. I couldn't help it. Sorry, Alan. Lenny Kravitz. Is there any love in your past? <laughs> uh, there may well be. And Blue Prune. Oh, hey, there you go. That's a new one. Uh, the the Marcells. Crescent pockets. I got Cress in pocket. Pretenders. Sprout. 
sprout. Let them all out at Christmas. You certainly do. And we don't have to take our clothes off. There you see. Can you beat any of these? You're really doing well. We've got a lot of them. Uh, my all-time favourite came in. It's old school because it's actually an Al Jolson song, I think. And it is Come to Me, My Melancholy Baby. Very good. Brilliant. So uh, if you can do better than that, do. And we've heard that you can eat green charred leaves in like a salad or something. Still haven't found out what we should do with chives yet, but if anybody knows, do tell. Probably add them. Cheese and chives? Is, is that... Uh, where have I seen that? A squirty cheese, isn't it? Cheese and chives? Anyway, let's crack on. Our next caller in happens to be Rob. Uh, no, it's not. It's Peter in general. I beg your pardon. Hello, Peter. Hello, Alan. How are you doing, mate? I'm very well, thank you kindly. What you got for me tonight? Settling in your new home? Well, it's a, a slow but but steady. So. I don't, I've not spoke to you since you were on Metro. Right, well, hey, thank you very much. What can we do for you tonight, then, Pete? Uh, I've just been told to ring you up because, uh, well, it was you that got us into it last year, and I've, I've done it again this year, you know, the uh, Great North Run for Cash for Kids. Yes, oh, how'd you get on? Well, I finished it. Hey, good lad. <laughs> I'm alive. <Shall> you? <laughs> <laughs> Are you still stiff? Are you still aching? No, I'm OK. It took us about five days to get over it. <laughs> <laughs> but it does, uh, I went to, I went to, uh, I've been telling people I went to the Aqua, what are them, you know, with the uh, Aqua uh, treatment uh, centres. Right, uh -huh. said, Aqua treatment centre, where is it? I said, Heaven Swimming Pool, the jacuzzi. <laughs> 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 so, you know, you got to look up to yourself. I mean, I couldn't move, I mean, yeah. uh, but I, I, I went, uh, I finished the race. Yeah. I mean, I was only just behind Mo Farah, you know, two hours behind them. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so I got the finish line. You've got to stumble yourself up the uh, ocean road, the, yes. uh, the metro, and that. Then you've got to wait for the metro. Yeah. Which is, you know, you can wait just as long as it takes to do the race. Absolutely. To yeah. get the metro. And yeah. then I went for a few pints, and I didn't realise that with all the water I'd been drinking and the dehydration, that the alcohol would go straight to my head. So I ended up a little bit worse for a way. I bet. You know? I, I mean, but a lot I, of people say that on the day of the run, you, you feel boosted and, you know, lifted by what, you, what you've managed to achieve. But the next couple of days... Oh, it's agony. Have you never done it, Alan? Yeah, I've done it three or four times, but I, I'm, I'm in the best place in the world now. I just stand in the middle and let everybody run past me. It's tremendous. Oh. Well, I always stand at the very back. There's nobody behind me apart from that. You know, the, uh, the, 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 the I think they call it the super van. You know, it just goes at the back. Yeah, the, it, yes, yes. So that's the only thing that's behind me. I just, I just can't straight the back. I just start from the back. You, you, should, I mean? you should ask for a lift. I know. I should just do one of the metro. I'm a local, you know what I mean? I shouldn't have to run from, from Newcastle to South Shields. Right. I don't have to get there by metro. <laughs> it's not what? the same, though. You'd miss out on all that atmosphere. Uh, that's do, do, you know, do you know what it is? I mean, when, when you, when, 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 you've probably got a lot of listeners who have probably just watched it on the telly. Yeah, you, yeah. you hear the athletes, you know, when, they, when people like the Mo Farahs and that get interviewed with that? Yes. Oh, the crowd, the crowd are brilliant and that, you know? And you think, oh, that's a load of rubbish, man. They're just saying that. But, mm. uh, I tell you what, the, the crowd make a hell of a difference to you. Absolutely. Because, I mean, the, the, I, was, I was running, I think I was somewhere next to the loop. Right. And the, I, I didn't, I, it didn't register on my head straight away. It didn't register on my head. Mm. I ran past her, and she had, like, a mixing bowl from the kitchen. Right. And I was about 10, 10 or 15 foot past her when I realised what they were. Ice cubes. Perfect. And I, I stopped and went back and got one. I was having one of them. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, pe pe people think that, it, I mean, there was one, I mean, this year, I, I heard about cupcake, there was a cupcake woman, there was a chocolate brownie woman, there was a, a dolly mixtures and jelly babies woman. Uh, alongside, wherever you went, you, you could actually do the Great North Run and be fatter. I don't know. You, you see, the problem is with, with, with me starting right at the back. By the time I get the way all these goodies are, they're all gone. I know, that's the you shame. Know? And you get the horrible and there's nothing but the horrible ones left. You know, the ones that people didn't want. Yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's, it's me at the end eating them. No, I know. And it's the it's the single licorices. And, oh, no, you can live with it. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it, it, the, the people are amazing, man. You know, along on the run, you know. Yeah, you, they're all shouting your name because you've got your name printed on your, uh, yeah. on your, on your belly and that. And everybody's shouting your name and it's a good laugh. And, I mean, I raised a lot of money on the run. and all because I, I was doing it for the same charity again, Cash for Kids. Great, thank you. You know, uh, so I did it for them again. Uh, true, I've yeah. just passed me... Uh, just past the target today, uh, three hundred one pounds. Fantastic! Uh, I've still got a few 
a few little things to go for uh, money wise. Because I'm uh, a local shop uh, called Uptons. Yeah. And they've got three shops. They've got one in Chilham Road, and one in Walls End, and one in Jarrah. Well, right. I'm a Jarrah lad, so I go to the Jarrah shop. Right. And the, uh, the manager, uh, well, the owner of the shop, kindly donated uh, some equipment uh, to, 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 to raffle off. Right. All of it. So, so we're in the middle of raffle and that off and that, you know, my mars did that bit as always. You know, I mean, my mars a little money making machine. You know, I just, <laughs> I just chuck her back. I just chuck her a batch of raffle tickets and off she goes. Brilliant. And she comes back with a hundred quid. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the, the funny thing is that around the Great North Run time, if you're in an office and there's half a dozen people doing it, you're scuttled, aren't you? Really, because yeah, it's like, yeah. well, you bought a ticket off him. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> this, is, this is the problem, isn't it? There's only so much you can give if you've got loads of people doing it, and then you, you know. I mean, I mean what, 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 you, what, what I would probably do is just uh, everybody who was doing the Great North Run within the office mm. uh, say, right, there's there's seven of us doing the Great North Run. Mm. So everybody in the office just chuck it into a pot, yeah, and absolutely. then we'll, 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 we'll split the pot with the seven uh, separate. Yeah, I've not, of money. one of the things that that uh, one of because before I got on the radio, I was I was in and based in an office, and the thing that was interesting was whenever it came to the big charity dues, and it wasn't cash for kids at the time. Uh, what people did was they'd start like a swear box on the table, Aye. and about after three months, you had enough to give to pay for a raffle ticket for everybody, really. You yeah. know, <laughs> with the kind of language where we were, it was not great. But uh, I know, congratulations. I mean, there's, there's loads of little ways you can make money. I mean, uh, I would, I would know what, uh, I think it was called Crystals and Sons, over, over North Shield somewhere. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I drove up there, and you know the blind cards that you get flying around the clubs, the clubs, you know, mm-hmm. you get like, uh, one to 28 numbers, and like, you pick a number. Yeah. You pay 50 pence or a quid, and you put your hand in the, uh, the, the dominoes and that, you pick up the domino, and like, right. that domino correlate with the number on the card and that's the winner uh-huh. you know what I mean you give the winner 30 quid and the, the other 10, 20 quid goes to the charity brilliant you yeah. know what I mean so there's, there's loads of little things that you can that you know you can, that you can just do I mean this year I didn't actually press uh, the paper had sponsorship I didn't really do much sponsorship this year mm. because I had other little things going on I had me, had me ma doing a raffle I've got the shop doing a raffle <laughs> you know I've had my brother doing blind cards and he's works and that you know what I mean <laughs> and I've just got him with the, with the hard part actually running the 13.1 mile absolutely you're the superstar right there I, I, know. Was that, uh, I was hoping that maybe once we're finished Alan that you wouldn't mind drawing it for and uh, we could do that absolutely not a worry we'll make it happen we'll, we'll make it happen uh, absolutely no problem if you uh Ring in when I'm on. We'll get you to come in, and I'll do it live for you. No problem. Excellent, Alan. That's brilliant. Dead yeah. easy. Happy to do it. All the best, Pete. Thanks Thank for you. all your all your hard Thanks work. You Appreciate it. Bless you, man. And uh, some more songs. These are from Ian from Whitburn, who's got a real one. Now I said I wasn't going to read out any real ones, even if it's a song as good as Peaches by the Stranglers. Um, Listen to your heart, he choke uh, by Roxette. <laughs> like a gherkin, Madonna. Mm, very good. Uh, yo, yes, I'm the grape pretender. Run radish, run radish. Run. We had none of radish up till now. There you go. Nobody's come up with a tomato. Is there no songs with a tomato in it anywhere? There you go. Peas in the valley. <laughs> and I love this one. It's from Body Scotland, where you, you would expect it. From Inverness. Blame me, that's right up. And it's from Ian and Katie. Uh, say hello. It's a lettuce from America. There you go. If you could come up with some of them, we'll have them. If you want to talk to me, please give me a ring. I'm going to have a chat with Rob after I've delivered the second clue. Now, we do a thing called the What's It. If we're brand new to you, uh, the what, what is the What's It? I ask you four questions. They're not usually terribly hard, so you end up with four answers. Then you tell me what the four answers have in common. There is some common link. You've got to work out what it is. The first clue, the capital city of England. Yes, yes, capital city of England. Mm -hmm. Second clue, where you can buy a hamster. Okay, second clue, where you can buy a hamster. Okay, usually, or a budgie, maybe. Used to be dogs and cats. Not sure whether they still do that now. But where you can buy a hamster and a budgie and a cage and all that kind of stuff. 
Two clues down, two more clues to come. Remember, the Watch It competition, that's the clues. It's for a, a Night Owls T-shirt. And everybody that comes on the show goes into the hat for a Night Owl mug. OK, that's where we are. Aidan Prince, uh, so glad you're back, Alan. You are seriously a pleasure to listen to. You've helped me so much over the years with my depression and anxiety. Just having you on is like having a friend in the room. Thank you so much, listening to you in Darlington. Aidan, stay well, and we hope to be entertaining you across the week as soon as I can twist it, as soon as I can make that happen, man. And let us... Oh, hang on, another one. This one's from Redka. Swede dreams are made of this. The rhythmics, you see, all greatest hits as well, coincidentally. Let's go and talk to Robbie's and see him. Hi, Rob. All right, Merry Christmas, Alan. <laughs> What's this about? Well, Merry Christmas for when it comes. Uh, well, I mean, it is September, isn't it? So, well, this is the know. thing, but the, the, <laughs> the shops have already got the stuff in the back waiting to go oh, out, man. and you're thinking, What's going on? It's just ridiculous. I saw the, 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 the I went to Sue Mart the other day, and the entire end of aisle was full of uh, Halloween selection boxes. Oh, selection. Oh, jeepers. Because I've seen the Halloween and fair dues. We're, we're a month and a half away from Halloween. Which is fair enough. Kind of, yeah. But, but you also know that within a fortnight before you get to Halloween, you're going to have all your rocket counters and your, bon your fireworks. You're going to get... You know how the shop has the top secret, get away from me, you're not old enough to buy this counter... With all, mm. with all the fireworks in it. Where, yeah, yeah they'll, look, be, they'll be appearing soon, yeah. I'm not selling them to you. Get your mother. You know, all that, those kind of conversations. But, uh, no, it's it's uh, there's something going on between now right up to Christmas. No question about it. But uh, it, just, it does... I know it's a, a bit of a cliche, but it does really seem like it's gotten earlier, early every year, doesn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. 100%. 100 percent I mean, if the selection boxes are out there already, that's just madness. Well, I mean, there's a bloke where I where we are in see him. Um, he always puts his Christmas tree up in September. Yeah, well, this is where, the reason we did the thing uh, on the net today was because there was a a feature in one of the newspapers where some psychologist because you can always get a psychologist to say whatever you want on a slow news day, yeah. and some psychologist has said the people that put their Christmas trees up earlier are happier people. Apparently, right. So I, I mean, I, last year I didn't do it at all. I went, <laughs> I went right through thinking I'll do it tomorrow, and I'll do it next week, and, and then never bothered, and then realised it was like two days into January, and it was a bit late. Um, yeah. But I didn't feel less happy because of that. No, I think it's a fine line between happier and being not wide upright. Because <laughs> some you people do, I mean? some people do it absolutely berserk. On the whole thing, don't they? That's well, I, mean, so I remember a few years ago I had an argument, argument with this woman. Mm. Um, she's she looked after her granddaughter during the week, right. and uh, she says, "Oh, I always start playing the Christmas DVDs for her mm. in September." I was like, Ooh. "In September? Why? Why are you playing Christmas? Why?" What she says, "Well, <laughs> I love Christmas. She loves Christmas." I said, "But that doesn't Christmas is." A, I says, "I love Christmas, but Christmas is a special time. How does that make Christmas special?" Yeah, because you would you would think in with any kind of sensibility you're watering it down, aren't you? You know, if, if exactly. you if it was Christmas, Christmas special, every day. if you make it four months of the year, yeah, yeah, no, don't get it, don't get it at all. But she just she wasn't having it at all. She just wasn't having it. Well, hey, different strokes for different folks, Rob. But there, uh, it does indeed. Oh, can I just pick your brains about something? Uh, we talked about you when you were in your previous home. Yeah, um, we talked about when you um, <laughs> when you met Motorhead. Yes. And you nearly had a punch up, or did you have a punch up, or we, did it nearly come to blows? No, we did have a punch up and broke various bones, which led to a gig being cancelled. Yeah. So you got you brought you brought their bones, or they broke yours? Both. Um, a fract really? A fractured uh, animal's rib cage, and he broke my nose. Get away. So um, it was a, absolutely a bit of both, and that led because if, if you think of it, at the time. I was doing probably the second most important rock show in the country. Yeah. And so they wanted that kind of publicity. So the next time that they were in the area, they didn't want to talk to me, but they did. And they they, they wanted me to play their stuff. And 
they, they brought a new guitarist in called Wurzel, very briefly. Uh, so they sent him in, and we got on fine, and there wasn't any kind of issue. So the time after that, Lemmy came in, corked up to the bosoms, and uh, said sorry and all the rest of it. Animal was nowhere to be seen because he, he bore um, a grudge. And to be honest, if he bore a grudge, and granted, I, I felt really bad that the show was cancelled because I didn't ask for it. I didn't no. I didn't think the fight was my fault. Then again, doesn't everybody say that? I mean, <laughs> essentially, all I You're did... Honor. All I did... <laughs> it's a bit like that. Uh, the, the only thing I did was they were swearing ferociously, so I said, thanks very much for letting me interview you, but if you're going to use that kind of language... I'm not going to be able to edit it so that it sounds remotely normal, you know, if every third word was an F. So I'll just I'll just leave it, have a good show, goodbye, you know, no no hard feelings or anything. And where you good? You said you wanted to interview us. I, well, I do, but, I, you know, I kind of cope with all the Fs. So if you just, just for the interview, if you go easy, and the, the, why don't you just and you stick it up your... And then... I got up to leave again and got blocked by uh, the animal. And then it led to, uh, then it became uh, one of these um, Tom and Jerry <laughs> cartoon <laughs> fights. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't a real man husky, do you know what I mean? It's funny because I joke about this. There's a, a, a couple of TV programs where they show you footage of essentially people fighting with each other. And mm -hmm. they always have men before they fight bouncing. You know, it's almost like I am yeah. Muhammad Ali, I'm in a ring, I'm gonna have a bounce. I'm yeah. gonna have a bounce before I hit him. Why don't you just hit him? You, you, everybody's gonna have this. And it, it was one of them where, you know, you, you run around and you. We did do damage to each other because uh, I was in a hospital a, a lot more often than he was to get me nose sorted. He just had a fractured rib, which of course oh. you don't do anything. Four, you just gotta let it heal. As for me, I, I had a, a broken nose that they had to put back in the, you know, put all the little bits right, and back together again. So, uh, yeah. I've just pictured you and Animal in the next bed to each other in the hospital, <laughs> and these guys leg up in a thing, and you've got <laughs> a thing round your head. <laughs> God, I wish it happened like that. <sighs> As I say, it's just I always think that that when you see these videos of people fighting they're, they're doing their best to look like they're tough but without actually hitting each other you know it's all push and shove and miss is what 90 percent of it is it's quite funny yeah but well, yeah. Can, you, can you remember what year that was that oh blimey i'm thinking first half Do of you know the, what tour it was no first half of the 80s this is probably as near as i can get Yes, the spades, maybe, or... And if, no, 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 I don't think so. I think it was after that. Yeah, because... Iron Fist or something. Because you, what you got to look for is when Wurzel joined the band. Because it, right. was, it was the year before that. Right, the year before that. So Phil Taylor had long gone. Yeah. Uh, what do you call him? Um, Fast Eddie. Yes, Fast Eddie was the threesome at the time. And then, uh, then I think Eddie left and... Wurzel came into the band, and, and another one, I think. I think they made it up four. Anyway, uh, here, anything else we can do for you, Rob? No, that's uh, All I will ask you is, uh, you had an old biography out, didn't you? Yes. Is that story in that book? No, because I, what I wanted to do was, I wanted to do, like, uh, a rock memories kind of thing. And right. that, that still might happen. But, uh, cause I'd like I, to read that. Because uh, another fight that I had with a, with a band is actually on one of their albums. Uh, is a band called Venom. Oh, yeah. And uh, they put a double... Best of death metal, yeah. They, yeah, they put a, a double album out, vinyl, back in the day. I think it's a double CD now. And the last track on the second side is them uh, attacking me and destroying the studio. So... Uh, and you what, can, it's a live recording of the... Yeah, if you go on... If, probably if you go on <laughs> Google, you can probably hear the whole thing, I'm fairly sure. So, and, But do it after 2 o'clock. <laughs> 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 thanks for coming on, Rob. OK, thanks a lot, mate, and get that book written. I will, thank you. The, the weird thing is, with 
It makes me sound like, hey, hey that Robson, he'll, he'll stick one on anybody. Not true. I'm the most peaceful, loving, gentle, kind. <laughs> yeah, perhaps he protests too much. This one's just come in. Alan, I was in B&M today. They have four ales of Christmas stuff. What? Already? And this one from Scotty in Chester the Street. Hi, Alan. Just a quick one to say a few of us are again competing in a 12-kilometre obstacle course run this coming Saturday. Born Survivor Storming the Castle, set up by the Royal Marines, brackets. Help my chosen charity this time, the British Lung Foundation. I mean, I may need their help at the end as mine will be hanging out of my rear end. Also, my old army mate, who I haven't seen since 2000, is joining us. Yeah, the problem is, if he's an old mate, he'll expect you to be as fit as you were last time you saw him. So you're going to have to do a little bit of... Uh, it's this coming Saturday, believe me, you no time to train or anything. Um, good luck. Make it happen. It's great catching up with old pals anyway. You are with the big one. And we have Linda from Barris Ford. Hello, Linda. Oh, good nabbins, Alan. Hello to you. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, fine, thank you. Excellent. A lot better. That's very good. I was just thinking of Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> I've, I've had nights when I've thought of her too, funnily enough. I'm a pretty lady. I'm a pretty lady. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a few more of the of the fruit and veg songs coming in. See what you think. Oh, All right. How much is that collie in the window? Mm -hmm. That's pretty good. Carrot will be the day. <laughs> uh, no, it's not working for you. What about? Oh, I'm going to grow tomatoes because I asked about tomatoes earlier on. All right. And cherry cross the Mersey. Oh, that's a good one. There you go. You see, so we're getting a few more. Give me just a little more lime. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> so if any other night owls have got some of them fruit and veg songs, that's what we're, what we're looking yeah. for. So what have you been up to then, Linda? Well, Alan, I'm, I'm having a big party. <gasps> right. On the 2nd of... Uh, I'll, I'll read this letter. I was, I was going to write you a letter and send it to you. Now. Oh, OK. It's just a little letter. Right. Dear Alan and Jennifer, I'm having a birthday party at Barrisford Community Hall, Saturday the 2nd of November, 2019. I have all the regular night owls there, right. and it would be lovely if you and Jennifer could spare a little bit of your time right. in, and uh, come along. Um, it starts at 6 o'clock and finishes early hours of in the morning. Right. But if you can take just a little bit of your time... Um, be lovely. It would um, be it lovely. It would be lovely. Yeah, it would be and, lovely. Um, right. It would be great if Kenny could do a bit of DJing. Right, I can ask you. It's going to be a massive party, though. Right, ooh, right. I've got, I've got even people from the village coming as well. <laughs> it's a bit, yeah. Right. And, um, but what was it? But it would be really, really lovely. It would just put the icing on the cake if you were there, Alan. Way well, bless you. Thank you very much. Can't promise, but no. when when I get the letter, I will sort out what I'm doing no, around I, that I'm time. I'm not sending it now. I've just told you. Oh, you just told me. So what's the date again? It's. The second of November, Saturday, the second of November. So it's what time does it start? Six o'clock. Six till late, right? Okay. Till one o'clock in the morning. Right, okay. I'm and do you know what? I, do you know why I'm doing it? Why are you doing it? Well, because about three or four times I've nearly died. Right. And what was it? Life is. is you've got to live life. Doesn't matter how long you've got to live. Mm. Just to flip it, enjoy it. I'll tell you this little. Little thing that I've got. It's a song, but I've put to put it in the poem. Okay. Enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. Yeah, absolutely. Enjoy yourself while you're still in the pink. The years go by as quickly as a wink. So enjoy yourself. It's later than you think. I've noticed this. Yeah. Because there's parts of me that aren't pink anymore. <laughs> no, it's. I mean, you're laughing. <laughs> You're laughing, but there's a few bits of me that's a bit purple, quite frankly, and I'm a bit worried about it. I'm looking younger. You're looking younger, you yeah. lucky thing. Eh? You lucky thing. I know. You know what I've been eating? I'm eating salads and fruit. Wow. And all, all sorts of stuff like that. Well, that's all good, and I do that too, but yeah. you see, I counterbalance it with a curry. Oh, no. It's not no. the same, you see. Mm. You don't have to tell me. I know these and things. And listen to this. I... 
my husband, he got married again, my Ooh. first husband. Right. In a church. <gasps> right. Are they, are they allowed after they've been married previously? Well, does that make my that marriage void? No, no, you you, you were you were his wife yeah. for a period of time. Oh, well, it make I'm it gonna void. get an element then. It it doesn't make it void that, that he's moved on, you no. know. Yeah, but the thing is I he's not married to me anymore. Right, well he wasn't married to you after you divorced though, was he? Yeah, but a church a church, I mean. Church oh, I see. You you mean spiritually, right, yeah. okay. What was it? I want to get rid of that as well. I, well, you see, there's a thing. Yeah. I've, I've been married, or I am married, for, yeah. for a fifth time. Yeah. If, heaven forbid, yeah. you know, because of that extra curry, <laughs> that, that the heart... Oh. <laughs> oh, and, uh, oh, stop it. Now, then you see, then you've got to think, mm. if I put my... I can't die, right? I just can't die. Yeah. Can't, and the reason I can't die is... Because slowly but surely, all of those ex-wives are going to die too. <laughs> and it's going to be a drip feed of them coming to where I am. <laughs> and I really don't want that. No. No. No, no. no you've got gender fence. She loved you and you loved her. Well, loved there you go. So it's just going to be a cat Did fight. you get my cards? I did. Thank you very much. And they're, they're, they're up in the house. So thank oh, you very I much. You. No, 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 that's oh, a lovely I'll give Jennifer my love, wouldn't you? I will, I'll pass, but, certainly pass and, that and on. I remember meeting her a, f a good few years ago. I was, was And what a you. lovely girl you've got there, Alex. Well, there you go. Yeah. I'm very lovely. Very fortunate. Yeah. Um, uh, just had another uh, fruit and veg come in. If you're a Beatles, are you a Beatles fan? Yeah. Eight days a leak. Oh, that's good Yeah, you know, eight days a leak. Very good. <laughs> well, I've got that. Do you like Neil Diamond? <laughs> yeah. He don't bring me cauliflowers anymore. <laughs> Brilliant. That's all good. What was it? Um, you know Joe Cocker? I, I, I did when he was alive, yes. Yeah. Well, he said the little things in life are free. He did. And that's true. It is. Because do you know what? I'm feeling the right mug now. What do you mean? Well, I've had... From Jump Radio in Germany, mm -hmm. I've had a mug from them. Oh, I see, right. And RPR, RPR One Radio, they remember me from years ago. Right. And S, V, no S W R Three Radio. Right. They still got the sign in the village where I lived. Mm -hmm. For when I I done a witch's dance. <laughs> <laughs> witch's dance. And what was it? There's loads of photographs of me. I'll have to get a hold of them, Alan. Well, you'll have to. Definitely want to see that. I'll have to show you them sometime. I should look forward to that glorious what was day. It? Um, what else was I going to tell you, tell you about? Um, oh, what was it? Uh, no idea. Um, it wasn't there. I'm going to Germany again at Christmas. Oh, my goodness. You're, you're always somewhere. Oh, yeah? What was it? Because um, I miss my kids, Alan. I can understand. And they, that. they mean the world to me, and my and my oh, and my little granddaughter. Oh, what a little treasure she is! She's full of love. She's four months old now. Right. And she's got the biggest blue eyes you ever did see. Ah, that's lovely. Oh, they're, they're so lovely. They're, they're not babies long, are they? Well, this is the thing. And this that's is what this I is. Do, just get, this is I've why we, a, we should spend more time with them. I've had a fright, you know, Alan, through um, things happening. The Nearly dying. It could, well, it's been a fright in anybody, that, isn't and, it? And um, I just want to get out there and do all what I can. Do everything. Yeah. I nearly said do everybody there, but I mean just do everything. Yeah. Instead. That's right. Good idea. And, uh, and you know, on the internet, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've got too many boys after me. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> I know. What was it? And I'm not answering their calls now, and they and they keep on ringing. Well, you see, this is the thing. You can't help it if you're a man magnet. <laughs> and I got this one. This one fella from from America. <gasps> he um, he's in the UN. He's in he the hates, UN. Yeah, and he hates his job. What was it? He's a doctor. He, li he likes being a doctor, but he doesn't right. like the UN. Right. It's funny, you know, because you know Nicola who works on the switchboard. Yeah. She has been 
corresponding on the internet with an American. Who's, oh, yeah. Who's claiming... You know Elvis the Pelvis? Yeah. His brother, uh-huh. the, Enos, she's been, she's been talking to him, apparently. Hey. Yeah, Elvis the Pelvis. Yeah, and, I know Elvis the Pelvis. That's Elvis. And Enos the... Well, anyway. Oh, no, Enos is a girl's <laughs> name, Alan. Well, I mean, it sounds like a man when she talks to him. <laughs> She's got a butch face. <laughs> Oh, there you go. <laughs> See, you've, you've undone me now. I, I thought it was a man, but I was wrong. Hey, Belinda, thank you very much. Oh, what to... was it? Alan, so what? I hope you, hope you and Jennifer could come along and Kenny. I will ask. I will definitely ask her. What was it? It's going to be the biggest party you ever, ever did see. The Barris fans ever seen. Lovely. Yeah. Thank you so much, Talk Linda. Thank you, then, Alan. Take bye. care. Bye-bye. Oh, got another, I've got another fruit and veg. They're everywhere. And this one is another one from Ireland. It's from... Uh, uh, Dublin, of all things, and it is the boss, Bruce Springsteen, corner run. Come on, that's fair enough. Tell you what, we haven't had yet, and we're a bit late. It's called The Blah. What is The Blah? Take a look at what's happening, what's texting, what's trending. What's on fleek? They all thought I'd forgotten on fleek, but no, it's still there. Do people still say on fleek? I don't think the ever did, to be <laughs> fair. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was really trendy with that. Anyway, I'm, I'm joined by Nicola. Hello. Hello. How's, how's Enos? <laughs> uh, he's well. He's well. He's well. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> dear. Oh, dear. You do know that Linda thinks there really is an yeah, Enos. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the thing. thing is. <laughs> we also have the producers of the stars, Hollywood Mitchell. Evening. Yes, yeah, Tony with us as well. And we first of all take a look at Monday's national newspaper front pages. So let's have a rattle down there, and you can all chip in if you like. And we want you to, if you hear anything that we talk about that you want to cover, pick up your telephone and give us a ring. Daily Star horror films kill off clowns. Scared parents are ditching kids' entertainers. You know the, the one of the big movies of the moment, It. Oh, uh, I want to see the new one. Uh, I watched the first one and I wasn't particularly enamoured by it. Oh. it. I saw the very first one, yeah. then I saw the first new one. Uh, I can't remember. I, can't remember. I went uh, last week. Oh, oh is it any good? good? Uh, if, if you want a long nap, I would go. Oh, yeah. I just thought it had James it McAvoy really, in it, would be good. He is good in it, but I, I, I don't know. I, I just seem to not, laugh more than anything. It's not scary. I frightened myself at one point because I thought something's going to happen here. And it wasn't, and you know when you hang away, and then it, like yeah. I made myself jump. But then the weird thing it. is, the one that I want to see is Rambo: Last Blood. You know, there was First yeah. Blood, uh, and then there was Rambo. His First Blood was, you know, when he went to the town and went yeah. went uh, ape on them all. But I'm looking forward to that, and that's not out for a, a week or so yet. So I'm gonna have to wait. Daily Express: The Brexit deal is within our grasp. Ahead of today's crunch meeting with EU boss Juncker, Boris says it is uh, within our grasp. Hasn't spoken to the guy yet, but it's in, it's within our grasp, people, he says. Uh, the Times, Johnson called Gove a bit cracked after his leadership betrayal, and Iran tells the US it is ready for a fully-fledged war. What do you think? Do you think that... Uh, it, Iran versus America. Who would come in on Iran's side? Anybody? I don't know how. Uh, have they got a big army, Iran? I mean, I, I would imagine they've probably got a decent-sized army. But yeah, essentially, modern war would just be one missile goodbye. Everybody, yeah, wouldn't exactly. it? I mean, would all be is, gone. Which is why we don't want a one. Uh, this is amazing. And you know, I've talked to this guy twice in the last two years. It's Rod Stewart, Star's Prostate Battle. Rod, I have beaten cancer. The legend reveals his joy after a secret three-year struggle, and wow. you would never have known. He, no. he, he yeah. gave no hint of it when you... He was always a happy, happy, happy lad, and uh, we wish him well. And also, you know this rugby player who's had to come out about the HIV? I will work with Prince Harry to fight the HIV spread... Somebody was blackmailing him because rugby players can't be gay. Well, he's gay. He's got a husband. He's happy. What's the What's the big what's deal the in this? Yeah. In I this think they were blackmailing him about the disease, about that getting out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I think so. 
But uh, as you know, nobody had ever come out in the world of rugby, as far as yeah. I know. To I say, think he's the only one, isn't he? Uh, as far as I know, I think that's the case. The Guardian, surge in UK children linked to county lanes drug gangs. EU dismay as Boris Johnson compares himself to the Hulk because he's going to break the chains uh, with Europe and, uh, and all of that. Mm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's kind of what I thought. Uh, the Daily Mail. Eat better, live longer, says Dr. Michael Mosley, who's standing there looking smug next to some food that you wouldn't sit on. You know what I mean? When you ever see... <laughs> Healthy yeah. food, you kind of look and you go, nah, you're all right. <laughs> um, police accused, it, it's still probably, he's right, I'm sure he's right. Police accused of giving criminals the green light. Shock rise in crime, probes abandoned in 24 hours. What they mean is, you call the police because your car's just been screwed over in the street. Within 24 hours, they'll have forgotten about it, they'll not do another single thing about your crime. Whether it's your house your car, assault in the street, any of this kind of stuff, that's scary, because that does seem to say criminals. It happened outside of mine the other day, a couple it. of months ago. It was about one o'clock in the morning, you just heard a big bang. Yeah. I looked out the window and there was bits of a car all over. It was the, the I mean, she listens tonight, I was actually, but it was their car. I went out, picked mm. all the bits up, but we didn't know what had happened because there was no car there. Did it look like the car had hit so it or something? Yeah. we had to piece it together. There was like bits of an Audi, oh. like bumper and stuff. Right. Looked at the front of the car and I was like, it's a black car. They rang the police and the police just weren't really interested. They were just like, oh, you'll have to ring the insurance company. Didn't even come down. What, we we've, heard, what we've heard is they'll just give you a crime number, leave it to your insurance and say, oh, it's not our problem yeah, anymore. But they had to sort it themselves. Like, but it makes, you, it makes you wonder, what, what is a problem for the police now? Because well, it seems the only time they're interested is when the, the speed camera does you for doing... Four miles over yeah. the limit. That's all automatic as well. Yeah. So yeah. you'll need a policeman. We just need that. more policemen, don't, don't we? Is and that the women. problem? And women. And and cross police gender, officers. Cross cross Sorry. gender officers. Officers. That's general they, across the there board. There you go. Of, <laughs> of all ethnicities. And dogs probably. And the police dogs. dogs. <laughs> cats. You can't leave cats. Oh. Oh. Police cats. Yeah. What about mice. You've got mice. You've got to have mice. Police mice. Police <laughs> mice. You cool. see, once you get started with this. <laughs> yeah. Political correctness. <laughs> we say political correctness, God, man. On this show, it really has. Uh, the Metro newspaper, Posh and Heckles at her show. There's people heckling her show. Hang on, I don't know why. A fashion show. Do you know why they're heckling her? Yeah, because it's probably the price of one of the dresses. I mean, I, I think they're a couple of grand for no, Poshes. I'm, I'm going to have to Did stand up smile? and try. What does it say? <laughs> fashion shouldn't cost the earth. Oh, oh the, she's going to get... Is it price? It's got to be because it's a couple of grand for a dress. I mean, who yeah. would pay that? Oh, it says instead of buying her clothes, repair the old clothes that you've got. They're seeing on the signs. Just imagine that. I mean, we like new clover, don't we? I mean, we but would you pay two thousand pounds for a dress? No, or, or a pair of no. pants? Say. No. What's the most expensive item of clothes you've got? Oh, hats. What, you would pay two thousand for a hat? No, no, oh. I, but I have spent. 200. Oh, well, that's not too bad. Oh, no, well, it is, really. Well, it, yeah. it doesn't make any sense at all. Well, if it's got extra bits on, like that hat. I've, I've, got, a, I've got a hat with a peacock for the... You've been up round my way collecting them bits, haven't you? Off, off, <laughs> off roadkill, <Peacock>. just <laughs> <laughs> plucking the feather. And uh, the main story for the Metro is Infantile Hulk. EU chief blasts the PM for comparing Britain to the Marvel hero. That's what he's got. And uh, now I can't get back to to where the other ones were because... You don't go back. I don't go back. Oh, do I go there? Yeah. Right, I say, I don't, yeah. Uh, there's no going back on this <laughs> show, I, I've just noticed. So let's see what else is... Uh, you know, oh, God, there you go. Johnson's bid to save Brexit on the 31st of October. You know, for a little while it was thought that might not happen. Daily Telegraph, Johnson confident he is closing in on a deal, even though he hasn't actually spoken to anybody yet. So time will tell. And ethical BBC will overtake Netflix. Not sure about that. Because you like your Netflix, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I quite like Netflix. It's, BBC's quite good as well, but I can't see it taking over. Hasn't got enough shows on, has it? I don't know. 
The Independent, England end on a high, that's the cricket, and revealed Costa pushed ministers to axe cup levy. I don't fully understand that. In the Financial Times, the Saudis seek to reassure markets as the attack halves oil production. You know, they've been hit by a drone and they're not sure who said it. They think it might be Iraq, uh, not Iraq, Iran, uh, and uh, or maybe uh, the Houthis. Yeah, they're not quite sure. I have been reading, uh, and I, I read random books that I think are fascinating. And one of the things that I'm reading at the moment is about Saudi Arabia. And I'm reading about how uh, the Saudi royal family, you know how there's loads of princes, and you think, how can there be so many princes? Because I think how many kids has the yeah, boss... They've got, enough, they've got a few wives, though, haven't they? Has so. the boss Saudi got? The original Saudi leader had 111 wives. Wow. Uh, oh, my God. And, no, sorry, 111 children. <laughs> not, not wives. Wow. 100, <laughs> 111, <laughs> 111 <laughs> children to something like 14, 15 wives. God. And so how, how do you decide who takes... Who, ha, which who, day to spend with which wife and things like that? Well, no, I wasn't thinking with? of that. I was just thinking that... So who becomes boss prince then? Is it the oldest prince? Out of which wife type of thing? Yeah. yeah. And it, yeah, is one wife more important than the other? Therefore, her child is more important. It's just it's a fascinating read. And I, I, it's a book all about black and white photographs from pre-1954 that have been coloured in and look amazing. And it just tells you a page worth of information on each one, which is just enough to hold my attention. <laughs> Otherwise, I wouldn't have read it in the first place. What else is out there? That is it for the national newspapers. What stories do you guys have got? Over to you, Nicola. So we've all got bad habits and stuff. Right. Um, which you might be spending too much money on hats. So imagine... Well, I, I've, I've only done it the once. And to be honest, you know, you know when you... I was on holiday and I had a little bit of spendy left on the last day and you think... And then Jen says, look, if you really want it, get it. Now, at that time, I thought it was £120 because I'd misread the label. It was 200 not 120 and I thought it was 120 So I went in and started talking. And you know when you're at the counter and you get a sweat hot <laughs> and you're thinking, I can't, I can't justify. In my life, I can't justify. That hat there was about £19. Wow. Which is fair dues, you think, and then you tart them up. So uh, rather than buy one that's tarted up, but I, I, I have had that, and uh, you get a cold. You're coming home, you get a cold sweat, and thinking, "Hope we're not going out tonight because I can't afford <laughs> for the bed." Well, if you'd had this watch on your wrist, it mm. would have gave you an electric shock for spending too much money. <gasps> wow! So you download an app. Mm. Um, it looks a little bit like a Fitbit. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you a 350 volt electric shock as a reminder if you buy the. Spent too much. If you spent too much on junk food, how do they know? You, you set how do they know you? To, oh, I see. But right. this is what I don't. How does it communicate? How does it know what you're spending your money on? You you have to do it with the digital, the it digital way. Maybe. Yeah, it's, yeah. yeah. So you probably use the watch to pay yeah. for your for mm. your stuff. Yeah. Um, the only thing that gets me is that it says it's not as powerful as a teaser. But it's like <laughs> you wouldn't want it to be, <laughs> really, would you? <laughs> but you know how you get used to things. So, like, you know how you used to get that nail varnish that would stop you from biting, but you, you get yeah, used yeah, to yeah. it. Yeah. It's like when you lick a square battery. Yeah. Bit like that. I mean, you, you've done it again since, <laughs> yeah. haven't you? It's not like, oh, oh yeah. don't do it again. We've all done that, haven't well, we? This yeah. apparently is like if you were to touch a doorknob after rubbing your socks on the carpet, that's the kind of shock you would get. Right. So it's just going to be yeah, like yeah, a little static, isn't it? Yeah. So it's not going to program just, in your head to make, might you, just think, make oh, you think, don't stop. You could just slap yourself on the hand or something. Explain this. Explain this. this is, in night hours, I want you to have a think of this and maybe you can come on as well and tell me how come, for example... My wife can eat something with hot pepper sauce from the Caribbean, and she doesn't bat an eyelid. But it, but she couldn't touch it like a, a, a fully fledged tandoori or a vindaloo or. That's but I can. Yeah, that's strange. But I can't touch these. It's just different tastes, isn't it? Well, different, like chilies, maybe. But what? But they're both like fire, yeah. fire and hell. And a strange one. I just don't understand how you... If you can take it, you would have thought you could take them all yeah. rather than the other. Because I got... Somebody gave... I was at somebody's house 
and they poured me a chili dip. Now, you can get some chili dips that are designed, you put in food, mm. and there's others that are proper, are designed to dip. I think she put out one of the chili dips that you put in food because it's like concentrated. Mm. And uh, she had various little items that you dip in chili. And I like me chili, so I, I went, I went scoop. I didn't just do dip, I did scoop. And I put it in my mouth, and it was, it was like I felt the skin of the inside of my mouth just go, just peel up. <laughs> and suddenly my mouth was smaller. It was bizarre. But that people were saying, blame me that, blame me that chili's strong. And I'm thinking, well, I just ate half of it on top of this spring roll. Well, it was it was just a mistake. Scary, scary hot. So what's yours then? How do you win Well, if you're the competitive type and you're a bit gassy, well, and what if you, you live mean in gassy? You like, like want to break wind, wind yeah. Oh, and right. if you live in India, oh, then there's a new competition taking place next Sunday. <laughs> Basically, it's the country's first farting competition. Oh, and you bring this show down it's, it's, so uh, much. No, but it's it's a blast story, isn't it? You it's called that, What the Fart Competition, <laughs> and it's it's the brain child of a singer, and basically he just wants to normalise the process of farting. So, basically... Oh, you could never do that, it's dirty. Well, they'll be judged on the volume, the length, and the musicality. I, so, I, di- I didn't know a kid called Roger from back in the, in the West End of Newcastle who could play tunes there you go. with his wind. Well, I was going to suggest... So if you could do that, well, I can't can do that. no, not you, just anyone. No, they can we ring don't in. Want what? Break <laughs> wind at me! Break wind at me, no, please! If you can, if you can do a tune, I mean that's quite entertaining, isn't it? Hold it at least we don't have to it. smell it as well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know how they do it here. Yeah. Can I just in. can I just say that, that I, I personally feel? First of all, I hate that word. I know, I know. You know, there's two words that this I hate just, in all the world. One the is word tab. The, it's the word in the, in the article. And the though. F word meaning to break yeah. wind, to, to pass gas or whatever. Yeah. I hate that word. Uh, it's, it's icky. And also, we don't we do not do it, though, do we? I mean, I mean not, we did that on air. We wouldn't no. be on air for five minutes. But if someone called up and they can play a tune, I mean, it's... <laughs> 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 Night Elsa. Uh, uh, I'll go and answer them for you. Yeah, well, I think yeah, there's going to be a rush on now, isn't there? That's for sure. That is loosely what we call the blah. Night Owls with Alan Robson. What are we talking about next? You make the call. 0191 488 3188. Greatest Hits Radio. Thanks for staying with us, Sam. we got so much more. We've got another... Topper, and I mean an absolutely topper, fruit and veg, because it's a bean, right? Mm-hmm. And this one comes from Brian. He's in London. Uh, he's down there on business at the present moment, listening to us in a hotel with his dab, with his dab out, as as you do when you're in a hotel away. And uh, he's come up with soy, 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 instead of say, say, say. Brilliant, Paul McCartney, Michael Jackson. Sorry, 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 very good. And uh, anything by... Because we we want to get all the fruit and veg in there, and we're, we're missing many of the, the more exotic. And he's also suggested bok choy division. Ah, no, that's pretty good. Now, dawn is the... Or should I say, the dawn shift at Sainsbury's have sent me a message. Alan, I was putting some mince pies on the shelf at Sainsbury's on the 28th of August. Far too early. I like Christmas at the end of November. So glad you're back. I'm trying to work more Sundays so that I don't miss any of the shows. Dawn Shift at Sainsbury's. So thank you very much, Dawn Shift. I thought Dawn Shift was a woman who worked at Sainsbury's. I'm now better educated. Thank you for that. And Sam says, tears for fears, sprout, sprout, let it all out. And a classic Krista Berg fruit and veg song, Lady and Veg. And my missus told me I had to stop doing flamingo impressions, so I had to put my foot down. And I got teased at school that my dad, who worked doing the roads for the council, got sacked for being a thief. I denied it, but when I got home, all the signs were there. Sorry, man. That's uh, Sam. <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Let's talk to Alan Blamey. Hello, mate. How you doing? Oh, Alan, you all right? Yes, I'm good. What are you talking about, well, Alan? Well, two things. Okay. Anyway, 
Um, can you just say, like, um, um, Neil and... Is it Matty? Matt? Matt? The, the young lad? Yes, Matthew. Young, uh-huh. Yeah, Matthew, sorry, yeah. Um, first of all, 25 years ago, I talked to you. Um, right. I was one. Anyway, so, as I was saying, I would just like to say, Alan, it's been a pleasure to have you back on here, mate. Well, thank you very much, Alan. Appreciate it. And could I just say, I sent you an email a few weeks back, mm-hmm. and I don't know if you remember it. It had on, um, I download your podcast mm-hmm. and put them onto a headset. All right, uh, yes, iPod. yes. Can you remember? Yes, yeah? that's right. Yeah, so I've listened for years. Anyway, a serious note. I'm sorry I've had a few drinks tonight. It's all right, no I've, I've, had mo- I've had more waiting for you. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fault, then. That's no worries. I'm, no, no, I'm blaming Nicola. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> could I just say, I, I want to talk about the, um, with Boris Johnson, is that okay? Mm-hmm, sure, go for it. Um, with the, the EU, first of all, I voted yes, and I also voted no. So I ticked both boxes and sent it back. <laughs> and I, I, Right? right, and I tell you the reason why is because I didn't believe both of them. Ah, and I, I have a, I have a European partner, mm-hmm. right? She's asleep in bed, or she'll kill us if she hears us. Right. Um, she, she's um, she's in bed at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a European partner, and I didn't believe both. And to be honest, mm. I don't want a second referendum. Right. What I would like is a good deal, a fantastic deal. We'll leave, and that's it. Right. But what I don't want was crush out. That's the last thing I want. Mm. The country doesn't need it. Thousands of jobs don't need it. Mm. And that's the worst thing they can do with them. Right. Well, you see, the, the bottom line is, deep down, uh, at the very beginning, we heard very different stories from both sides, the propaganda of, of, of every Definitely. side. We're still getting the same thing now because yeah. uh, everybody's saying, well, the crash out would be terrible, and then we got other people saying, "No, it'll be the best thing that's ever happened to us." And no, I don't believe that. I, well, I, I don't think any of us will that. really know until, until, until we're out. Well, I can honestly tell you, where I work, mm. we've had a meeting, and they've already told us if we leave without a deal, things are going up. They're going to charge the customers between seven and ten percent oh, extra. Jesus. They charge seven, ten, seven to ten percent extra. It's going to go across the board. Yeah, yeah, because others will have to do that to compete with the yeah. people that, that do that. I understand. Yeah. Well, yeah, well, let's let's just hope for hope for the. I there was a song in an old Mel Brooks film, and it was it was called "Hope for the Best, Expect the Worst," <laughs> and that, Bell, Bell that tends to be what we get up here in the north, isn't it? It is definitely. And I'll tell you something now, Alan. As far as I'm concerned. Um, a lot of people are calling out saying, leave without a deal, this mm. and that. But at the end of the day, they've got to remember that it'll backfire on them at the end of the day because what will happen is, is that we'll leave. Yeah, things could be great, but they don't know that. Mm. It, the more, you know what I mean? Mm. It could fire back on the, backfire on them and it could be, oh God knows, I, I wouldn't mm. like to say it, to be honest. Like, right. I mean, I'm worried, to be honest, I'm really worried. And Boris Johnson, at the moment, I've been t- we're looking at the news, he's gone there and he may be getting a deal. Hopefully he's got a deal and that's it. Well, you see, the, the, believe- the, the only thing yeah. I can say about that is if you look at it, because obviously we just look at the headlines, there's, you know, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the whatever they choose to be the headline that day in the newspapers. Uh, mm-hmm. Other sites are saying Boris is claiming that, but the, mm-hmm. the people in Europe say, who's he been talking to? Because he hasn't been talking to yes, us. I've seen that. Yeah, I've so seen that. so if, if that's the it. case, it, it might just be propaganda again. But uh, I know. who I'm knows? I'm worried, to be honest. Like, I'm absolutely well, worried, you know. I mean, um, well, I, I just don't want it to go... I don't want to crash out full stop, you know. Right, Me, no, personally, I wish it just never started from the beginning. Right. As far as I'm concerned, if, when Cameron, he's the, Cameron and Theresa May are to blame. Cameron had to have a referendum, but... He did it because of the Tory party was breaking up. Mm. And he did it for the Tory party, not for the country, for the Tory party. Mm. And, it, and that's what worries us, you know. But now he's come out and saying, you wish he never did it. Bit mm. late now, Mr Cameron. I, I was going to say, a bit late. Uh, is, is yeah, the, is a bit the late. Deal. Well, the, yeah. bottom, the bottom line is there's, there's still propaganda on all sides. We're, we're heading towards uh, what we think could be another election, maybe... Uh, that that being the case, people will vote the way that they that they feel. It's going to be very interesting to see which way the people go. Yeah, you know, you talk about another referendum. Would that not be the thing that that kind I, of I solves I, it? 
I don't think it would be, to be honest, Alan, because no. we've had one referendum. It's like, you know, there's too many arguments against that, mm. and that's why I disagree on. I mean, like I said, I voted in both boxes. I didn't want to vote. Yeah, but you see, when, you know, that, I, when that got to wherever it got to, it would mm. be classed as spoiled, and it wouldn't, yeah, wouldn't be counted on, on one side or the other. That's, that's I know that's why you did it. Yeah. And, and, and to be honest, another referendum wouldn't do it. What I would like is a good deal. Mm. Keep it friendly with the Europeans. It's not, at the end of the day, it's the EU, the EU is what they've done. They've done nothing bad to her. Do you know what I mean? If anything, if you think of it, after World War II, this, if you pardon the expression, the country was on the backs of its arse. Mm. And these put, give, help her out and became the, what, the fifth richest country in the world because of the right. EU. Right. And people don't realise that, you know. They keep turning around saying, well, the EU's done that, the EU's done that. Yeah, they're made with the fifth richest country in the world. Right. But, but yeah, but there's an awful lot that also say, but they're giving us rules to follow and we should be an independent country and, and all of that. My situation was I, I ended up not voting because I didn't know which way to go because I liked the idea of independence and leading the mm. world and all. Loved the idea of it. But whether, uh, whether there's any likelihood of it ever happening is another thing. But mm. on, the, on the other hand, I love Europe. And I, I love mm-hmm. I love Europeans, and I love uh, being I part of this be big, b- because big I understand you, Yeah, yeah. I understand you have to be biased because obviously the radio show, but you know the same as me. That, that we are better off in Europe. We were not. You you remember the nineteen seventies and nineteen sixties? What it was like. Mm-hmm. The Europe came along, and look at where we are now. That's how I look at it. We wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for the EU. It's as simple as that, and people should realise that. Well, yeah, but there's, a, there's an argument about everything you say. There's an argument on the other side, and that's that's mm-hmm. that's just how it is. Anything else while you're on there, Al? I do. Uh, hang on, second thing. Yeah. Uh, well, since you left that other radio station, mm. right, to come to this one, it's not the same radio station, is it? Uh, well, they're, they're not the same, are they? Uh, well, obviously not. No, because uh, right. that's good. Because I'm just trying to think of the uh, right. Okay, <laughs> <I'm there>. right. <laughs> well, all I can say is I had to go back in time and listen to your old um, oh, all this stuff, right? Shows. 1985, yeah. 1987. Jeepers. And I tell you what, Alan, I was listening to a fantastic, right. absolutely fantastic. I tell you what, More your voice, man. your voice sounds younger than mine. I tell you, <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, there's, there will be more to come. We've just got to get to the right place, and then we'll hopefully we'll be back. That's the that's the plan. And, and, and the third thing, Alan, the last one, because oh. you, you're, you're going to be busy. I went to Chillingham Castle uh, a oh. while back. How'd you get on? Um, well, I. I was told to bring a torch, right? Mm, yeah. I brought a torch. But what I didn't realise it was a floodlight. Um, and it just flooded the whole place. Oh, <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> yeah. But I, tell you, I didn't see anything. Right. Um, some people say they did, some say they didn't. I just don't believe in it. But right. I tell you what, I had a fantastic night. It was a brilliant night. Right. And I really... And the person I took with is left there now, and he's doing another... Sh- um, He's doing another gig somewhere else, right, and uh, right. we're going to go there. I want to see something, uh-huh. but I've never seen nothing. And, I would and until see until you see something or, or experience something yourself, you, you're but never you're never going to believe. I understand. I can tell you a story. My dad died about ten years ago. Right. And um, a few years after, well, when he died, about a year after he died, I was sitting in the cinema, mm-hmm. and I could smell him. And uh, oh, honestly, wow, I could smell yeah. him. Uh-huh. And I thought, nah. I came home. I could smell him. I sit in my car. I could smell him. And then that's happened for a good few years, and all of a sudden it stopped. Right. And I've never smelled him since, you know. Mm. And it just seems, seemed very funny that I could smell him everywhere, you know. It was yeah, that smell. It is. absolutely. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. fascinating. So, I mean, you've, you've had something that, that's hard mm-hmm. to... That's hard to interpret any other way than there was... Your, your late father was around you, isn't mm-hmm. it? It's, t- it's t- kind of teasing without you actually seeing anything, dude. That's the thing. I know. I-, I would love to see something like that. Right. Hey, well, fingers crossed. There's plenty of time. I'll we'll be doing more stuff too. But thank you for coming on. Alan, can I just say, it's a pleasure you come back on, mate. And the radio station you're on, if they can listen to us, five nights, possibly six, but that's seven. <laughs> if it comes Don't let them see his last. Let him have seven nights. All right, that's done. Thank you very much, mate. Uh, this is this is how I end up getting divorced as often as I do. But anyway, oh one nine one four double eight three one double eight. Yeah, we got we got stuff to do, things to talk about, places to go. 
And uh, Terry from Concert, Alan, great to hear you back on the radio. Thank you. We've got some more Fruit and Veg songs. Uh, Tina Turnip. Uh-huh. But uh, Nut Squash Limits. Oh, that's a stretch. And hi, it's me. I'm quite surprised we've forgotten St Andrew's Day as it's part of our British culture, says Alan in Northumberland. And I agree with you. You hear people going on about St David's Day. I've got a leak in me hat and a daff in me pocket. Uh, yep. St George. You see, St George was Syrian. Th- this is the thing. So I can't get it. I find it difficult getting it. No disrespect to Syrians. Just if St George was English, then he should be the patron saint of England, you would think. Like St Patrick Island. And we think he could be French, but he spent a lot of time living along uh, the Roman War in Cumbria before he got captured by the pirates. Oh, it's a heck of a story. So, um, but St Andrews, we should absolutely support St Andrews Day. And it's uh, back end of November, I think. And Anne's been on, Anne comes on. So glad to have you for one night, only a matter of time before we get more nights, surely. The one thing I would put into room 101 is Christmas. Hate it with a passion. It is so stressful. You get Christmas songs and cards in your face from the end of September. I always think of homeless people and parents who are uh, stressed to hell as they can't afford to buy the stuff their kids are asking for. And by the way, I read your autobiography. Brilliant read. Love you. Thank you, Anne. Great to have you with us too. We want everybody over here, though. Let's get everybody in first. And Brendan from Benwell... Uh, Bonnie Benwell, you're talking about music. Have any of your listeners got any tapes of U2's support gig in 1982 with the police at Gateshead being tried for 20 years? Brendan, do you know the only person that had a reel-to-reel tape of that was me? Uh, I was given one at the end of the gig by the people who recorded it, and it wasn't the band. Uh, It was our people, and they gave me a copy and it had the Lords of the New Church, it had the Beat, it had U2, and it had the Police. And there was four songs by U2 that we that I had. And uh, this is the tragedy. At the end of, uh, well, people stopped using Revox recorders. And I ended up putting probably 500 to 1,000 recordings on Revox tape into a skip when I moved house and it happened to be one of them. Horrific though that may be, but I did have one of the two copies. There's another copy out there and Brendan, I hope you're lucky enough to find it. Meanwhile, a little piece of music first. Now this is one of the best known and daftest songs. Dexie's Midnight Runners. I asked them about best and worst things. Well, I think the business itself is the law is the law because I, I hate the business side of it yeah. um, you know it doesn't have any bearing on music whatsoever really sure um, that's the worst bit the best bit is playing just just being on stage and mm. and, and getting the chance to entertain people really yeah. um, for me I think um, I think uh, doing really good work whether it be an album or a live show mm. I like doing albums as well you know because I like things to be documented, you know what I mean? Sure. It's like, so that's what's good about a record, which is really why I'm, which why I'm really glad we've done a live album. That's right. the best. You know what, as well, the money, I don't mind it. You know, it's, I'm glad for it. I'm grateful for it. You know, mm. it's good. Uh, the worst, the worst, the worst, the worst, dealing with personalities. Right. You know, right. dealing with you're personalities. You're talking about Jim here without mentioning him. Totally, totally. <laughs> what? No way. Actually, you know, definitely not anyone but Jim. But yeah. okay, you know, um, might be people in the business. Do you know what I mean? Who mm. don't get it, but say they do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Might be band guys. You know, not now. We have got a good band. I can hand on heart say every one of them people. I'm totally up for. They're totally getting it and they're totally committed to it. But there has been times, you know, when. Mm. 
you know, they just, I don't know. It's, you know, it, bands, we're human beings and, yeah, the, and yeah, the stakes yeah. are high and people get jealous, all that kind of stuff. And it can be very hard dealing with the personalities and the politics. Yeah, for sure. I'm probably for being sure. far too honest now. That's yeah. okay, that, that's, that's yeah. fair. How many dance floors of two dozen blokes all dancing by themselves in a big circle? How many dance floors is that song? Ruined across the world. There you go. Come on, Eileen. Bit of a classic. Let's get the calls in. We have Matthew in Newcastle by the time. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Alan. You right, mate? I'm very well. How's your glasses? You get some new ones? I'm gonna get. I'm gonna go with Ian on Wednesday because I'm out with him on Friday. So oh, I I'm see. gonna go pick them up. The blue ones. What I can do? I can try and take a photograph of them if you want and send oh, them. Oh yeah, love love to see you in them. I mean, you're getting blue ones, are you? Getting blue ones, yeah. Ooh. I had a good week. I've had a very good week. Thank you very much. What about yourself? What you been up to? Well, I've been playing on the Hitman games, enjoying the Hitman games, and having a good time. Have you shaved your head? No, not yet. I'm not yet. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's funny. Uh, yep. <laughs> he, says, he says I've been loud on the phone. I don't think I have. I've been a good lad. You have. You've, you're yeah. a solid fella. No worries. I'm a solid fella. It's good to speak to you. Good I'm to really talk enjoying to you. the show. Good. He and Nick Lab being stitches. <laughs> yes. It's funny. Lovely yeah. lady. She's a lovely lady. Glad she's still working there. Yeah, me she too. She does a marvellous job for years. There you are. Yep, yep. Three more things. Did you hear about that boy? He went for a, he went somewhere for a meal for his birthday with a sandwich, and he still saved him a sandwich, and it killed him, you know what I mean? That's, yeah, that, that's what I mean? terrifying. I know it could happen to anybody yep. as well. That's the scary that's part. Why, that's why we've got to be careful what we eat, you know what I mean? By we the way, do. Be careful what we eat, you very, know what I mean? Very true, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, what do you eat? I mean, what's your, are you fed I, well? Yeah, yeah, I am. I like kebab meat, pizza, chicken chicken cheese slices from the pound shop. When I go with you and he says, two for a quid. <laughs> there you go. Lovely. Uh, Proper you food. Know, I remember, yeah. do, you like, do you like the cheese slices from the pound shop, by the way? Alan? Not particularly, I have to say. Um, but I'm yeah. a I'm a big fan of the toasted cheese sound. The open topped Ooh, toasted cheese. Toasties, cheese. Ah, there you go. Yeah. I like the cheese. I like the cheese toasties with onions in it. Yeah, I me think, too. Tony like the cheese with onion in it. Hundred percent. And you can also have like just an ordinary cheese and yeah. onion sandwich. Yeah, that's lovely yeah. too. And then there's um, cheese savory. Ooh, gotta oh, mention the cheese famous savory cheese. With savory. Onions. <sighs> Yep. Uh, yep. I bet that Tony's. I bet that Tony's waiting for his pizza when he goes home. He'll say, oh, my face yeah, I was gonna say, I'm, I'm gonna have to eat something on my desk here. Now there's only pens and paper. I'm gonna have to eat something. Yeah, you've not got a canteen. What you can go to, by the way. No, what what they do here is they they've yeah. got like a they've got like a. Yeah. It's almost like a tuck shop. A tuck shop, yeah. But all it all it's got's like crisps and sweets, and you yeah. you you want to eat something that's a bit. Yeah, a bit more substantial, yeah. but I'll uh, be here. I like the um, I like the Harry Bow sweets from the pound shop. They're nice as well. Right, you know yeah. What I mean? You can't buy them pound radios from the shop any pound shop anymore. They weren't very mm. good radios, but every time you put batteries and try to listen to night, those are still the batteries would die. Yeah, that's <laughs> no I know you've got to get gotta get plug in ones really for us. Plug, you, plug in ones. You can't get a DVD radio what's got the station built in, you know what I mean? That's yeah, good. That's true. Yeah. You can get the app as well. That's it. Yeah, that's it. It took me I was to find the app, I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. But well um, done. Good been man. Playing, been playing the the Hitman 2 as well, been playing that. Thought I'll go back and yeah. play the Hitman 2 again. Been shooting everybody? Been shooting everybody, aye. Good lad. Aye. <laughs> I'm out on Friday with Ian. Don't don't I'm shoot out. anybody when you're out with Ian. I'm not shooting Ian. All right. <laughs> Three more things. Um, <laughs> it's going to be coldest in the winter, isn't it, by the way? Dead. Everybody seems to say we're going to have a really frozzy one, yeah, so yep. we'll have to wait and see. Is Night Owl's going to be on for Christmas Day? Do we not know yet? I hope we'll be on as, as we would normally be on, but we'll uh, we'll yeah. see. I hope we can get some more days. I used to, I'm enjoying being on on Sunday, but hopefully get some more days for Wednesday. You know, well, I know everybody. You know, everybody's been with... saying the same thing, and we're we're trying. Well, I'm working in that area. But I'm doing really I mean. well. You know, I mean, every Sunday I'm doing really well. Right. You're doing great. Yeah. You've you've not let me down at all. You come. I haven't. I'm Soon as the show began, you. you were straight there. Anyway, do you want to say hello to anybody, Matthew? Hello to about three more things to that. Hello, to Ian. Hello, to Mary and Jimmy, and hello to. Anybody else who knows me, what can I go out for, Alan? You're in the hat for a mug tonight, so everybody who's been yeah. on the show automatically does it. I've talked about three more things. I've been watching the TV, watching 
But um, the Big Bang Theory. Right. And it was funny, you know. Good. It was funny, the guy Leonard in it. He was saying, saying the guy, because the guy Sheldon thinks he's smart than everybody, and Leonard was saying to him, you don't need to be smart than me. I'm a physicist. You know, he's a physicist. Like, he works mm-hmm. at a, like, um, uh, uh, a laboratory yeah. thing, or whatever you call it. And he's a scientist, and the guy Sheldon says, he says to this guy, this guy who's a scientist who used to watch, and the guy looks at him and says, he says, why do you, why do you put up with Sheldon? He said, he said, because he's my friend, and, and the guy <laughs> said to him, you, you know you're describing a dog. <laughs> right, I know, but that's why we put up with everybody, because they're our friends, yep. that's the way we do it. Yep. Got to move on, Matthew, but thank you for I'll calling. Put on the YouTube for me. I'll make sure that that happens. Thank you, mate. Good night, thank you. You take Bye-bye. care, thanks. Bye, there's Matthew. Right, clues. Four clues, and you've got to work out what links them together. Clue number one, the capital city of England. Second clue, where you can buy a hamster. Where you can buy a hamster. Third clue, the sandy bit between the sea and shore. The sandy bit between the sea and shore. The fourth clue, usually found behind the front street of any town usually found behind the front street of any town now if you've got any idea put the words together i think the four answers point to a word that goes on the end of all four there is one word that universally fits all four answers what word were we looking for Okay, you're on the greatest hits. Uh, that, that should be helpful to you. Four clues down. Give us a call right now if you can possibly answer that question.